We'll call the April 11th meeting of the Board of Appeals to order, uh, 734. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, just some housekeeping items. I believe we have excused absences tonight from Mr. Uh, uh, Morgenthau, from Denny and, and Nathan, um, so we can note that in the record. Otherwise, our board is uh, fully comprised with regular members and one alternate. So I know we have a lengthy agenda tonight. I know there's a lot of people here. We're going to do our best uh, to move along as quickly as we can, give everybody their opportunity um, to be heard. And we might go out of order a little bit on a couple of matters. Uh, to keep things moving, uh, but otherwise, hopefully, uh, we'll be moving right along. Um, so, next on the agenda was the acceptance of minutes from March. They're not ready. They're not ready. So we will table that. And I think we had also had a minutes discussion from the last meeting. If anybody wants that revisited, um, we can always revisit that. Committee reports, I think we have none for tonight, right? That's correct. All right. Um, Number four on the agenda is the matter for Mr. Morris for 1 Peter Street. That uh, if you want to come up and tell us where you are, that was from our last meeting. You were here for a minor modification or insubstantial change of your plan. And I think uh, was there also the request for the variance extension? Yes. Filed? Okay. All right. Do we have that, Carol? Yes, we think you have it. Okay. Uh, excuse me. My name is uh, Betsy Nelson. I'm the architect helping Steve, and I do have handouts if you would like to uh, latest it, revisions. Is it stuff that we already have? Uh, you have a large sheet with this on it, which is all the setbacks, comparing old setbacks and new setbacks. Yep. So it's, it's a, a more isolated condensed version of what you have so if you want to that's fine as long as it's in the record I mean we can take it and Merrill can take one so just to recap from out from the last meeting um, <clears throat> you were working on the decks right because they were encroaching into part of the setback that wasn't approved yes that's correct all right so, so, so we're from these that um, we eliminated one deck okay and we took a bite out of the other deck. So, why don't you pass me the elevation board? If I may. Sure. Uh, these are the latest elevations that you can see. So, from Peter Street. There's no change. I don't think that was understood totally last time because we didn't point it out that there will be no removal of the roof, no new second floor. So from Peter Street, <coughs> you're pretty much going to see what you see now. Um, and then from uh, Tewitt Street, Side Street, uh, you'll see this. So you can see this perpendicular addition, the two bedrooms above, the garage underneath, and the new roof is slightly lower than the existing. So all of that is set back totally within what's already there. So there's no extension. He has a variance essentially to extend for his first scheme, but this is so reduced that we didn't go beyond the existing house with the addition. So the two deck areas that were in question, one of them was on this side, on the two side. And we've eliminated that. We just have a small landing. Is that the 14 foot 2 inch? Uh, no, that's on the other side. So this is the 19 foot 6 inch? Uh, yeah. This one here, uh, off of the 2 inch, the setback is 38 feet, which is what it is now. We haven't, we haven't extended the house in any, or the deck beyond the existing uh, edge of the house. Right. And on the other side, the one you just mentioned, yeah. uh, now we have 14 foot two uh, as our key dimension. Right. Uh, we had uh, the variance uh, 
was issued uh, has 13 foot six, and that's where we went to rye last time when we came. That was 12 foot two. But now we're you're back within we're the back within what's approved. The All right. Uh, the side set back there is 15 feet. We're not we're going to go into that. So. so hopefully this should be the trick. Um, if there's any questions, feel free. I um. Uh, Steve also did apply for an extension of the variance that was granted before. Yeah, he's entitled to a, a one-time uh, six-month extension by written request. I can find it. Do you see it? Is it attached to... Uh, oh, here it is. Okay. Uh, Steve, there's dated April 5th. All right. <coughs> I don't have any questions to you, but <coughs> everybody else may. Not me. Okay. Not fine. Okay. Okay. I'm all set, Mr. Chair. Well, if the board is satisfied with what's been presented, I would suggest that the board would then make the finding, or the board could make the finding if they're so inclined that to deem it an insubstantial change and also uh, make the finding to uh, approve the extension uh, that you are allowed by right. So that would, I would suggest, be in the form of a motion as it relates to Do whether. To close the public hearing? Is there a public hearing on this? Well, there's no new public hearing. There's, they're, they're here. They're working off the what was approved I'm by right. Asking, yeah. yeah, no, I don't think so mm -hmm. in terms of this. I think if the board were to find that it's a substantial change from what was submitted, I think they would then need to notice a, a new public hearing. But I think in this context, uh, they're clearly within what was approved. Uh, in fact, they've lessened uh, the plan. So uh, Then I'll make the motion to accept the revised addition plan dated April 5th, 2017 from Scott Ludwig. I, I think we have to deem it first that it's not a um, um, major modification. Oh, okay. Whatever we have to do. <laughs> well, you could add to that motion. And you could say to, to a, you and could to you could add to it and say that make the finding that it's an, an insubstantial change. That, in my opinion, that is un, uh, a very minor change in what we have previously allowed. Okay, so you so insubstantial change, right? An insubstantial. Change. Okay. And you want to add to it to an extension of this variance. Well, let Paul read that. He's a clear. <laughs> no, it's you're, just you're an, making a motion. Well, let's just do one. Mo let's do one motion. Do you want to do one at a time? Let's do one okay. motion at a time, just to okay. keep it. I thought you'd ask him. Well, well, I just. You just changed? No, as to the change. So you want to approve it? Yes. Based on the insubstantial change. Yes. Okay, that's the motion. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. S second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Okay. So we'll deem that insubstantial, with respect to the extension. You want to move to approve that? Motion approved. I, I don't have a copy of the notice, unfortunately. Is there a, a separate notice? I'm happy to. Yeah, you want me to move? It's just, it's just a request. It's just a written oh, that's all? Yep. <coughs> uh, so, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to accept the letter for a time extension for the property located at 1 Peter Street, Map 24, Parcel 62 North, Andover, Mass, 0845, Nair 4, Zoning District. Uh, which is a, uh, there's a notice of decision for the year 2016, which is recorded in the Registry of Deeds at Book uh, 14735, page 106. Uh, and it is a notice of decision for the uh, applicant Stephen Morris, the address 1 Peter Street. The hearing date was May 3rd, 2016, and June 20th, 2016. Petition number 2016 002. So that's did I make the motion to extend and then yes. note, the, note the plans, Mr. Chair? I think, I think we should, yep. Uh, included in the motion, Mr. Chair, are a handful of plans. First is titled, a revised edition prepared for an owner of record, Stephen Morris, site address 1 Peter Street, North Andover, Mass. Looks like it was prepared by Great Northern Survey at 378 Littleton Road, Chelmsford, Massachusetts. There are, it's dated That's not the right one, is it? February 10, 2017? April 5th. This one. That one. April 5th. April. 
All right, dated April 5th, 2017, Scott T. Ludwig, professional land surveyor. We also have a, a packet of packet of three plans, the first of which is Title One Peter Street, North Andover, Massachusetts, site plan, proposed house footprint. And it appears to be undated, but showing um, one Peter Street. Attached to that are the revised edition plan that I just noted, Mr. Chair, uh, dated April 5th. Finally, there is a broadsheet, proposed additions and renovations, 1 Peter Street, North Andover, Massachusetts, dated 4-4-2017 for Steve Morris, owner, prepared by DeCastro Nelson Associates, Inc., and uh, Boston Building Consultants. There appear to be, I have two sheets, but I bet there are more. There's, a, I think there's just two a, cover, a cover sheet and there is a three. Is there more than one sheet? More than two sheets? What's the title sheet? We have a set here if you need them. Do we have those on record? We have them found? Sheets one through five? Okay. So there are a list of drawings on the cover sheet, Mr. Chair. Uh, T1, A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. I think so. Endeth the motion, Mr. Chair. Okay. Motion is there a second? I'll second the motion. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Deem that approved. Okay, so we'll issue you uh, a, new, a new decision with respect to that. Thank you so much. Okay. Sure. All right. All right. We're going to go slightly out of order. Um, just because of the... Because uh, you can. <laughs> that's, a, that's what I would say, just because you uh, can. <laughs> so uh, Brooke, is Brook School ready? Okay. Oh, I beg your pardon, of course. Uh, notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing at the Town Hall located at 120 Main Street, North Andover, Mass. on Tuesday, April 11, 2017 at 7.30 p.m. to all parties interested in the petition of Brook School for property 1160 Great Pond Road, map 0103.0, parcels 0028, North Andover, Massachusetts, zone 845 in the R1 zoning district. The petitioner is requesting a variance from Table 2 Dimensional Requirements, R1 zone, the allowed height 35 feet. Proposed height is 48 feet. The variance requested, therefore, is 13 feet. Application and supporting materials are available for review at the Office of the Zoning Department located at 120 Main Street, North Andover, Massachusetts, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from the hours 8 to 4, Tuesday from the hours of 8 to 5.30, and Friday from 8 to 11.30 by order of the Board of Appeals. Albert P. Manzi III, Esquire, the Chair. Okay, thanks. Great job. So uh, you, you guys have an electronic proposal? Uh, is that what's going on? No, no, we have, we have this material here. Oh. I wasn't sure if I could put it up on the screen. Oh, I see. That's okay. That's you. Ready? Yeah, you're, you're hearing. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Great. Just please um, name for the record. Sure. I'm Jason Bowers. Do I need to speak to that mic or not? It's helpful. Okay. All right. uh, I'm Jason Bowers with Ann Bayer Architects. I'm joined with Steve Scribner from Ann Bayer Architects, as well as Paul Griffin, the CFO from Brooks School, Anthony Cleves from Woodham and Bingham, our civil engineers, and Norman Kinnear from Brooks School as well. And we're here, as you stated, to review the height variance uh, for the new visual and performing arts project at the Brooks School. We've been working with the school for about three years now, I think, to develop a plan for a new, a new building to replace a series of buildings on their property. As you see here on this plot plan, it's right at the center of the uh, school, uh, right at the heart of the campus. And we're looking to replace the existing barn building, which housed their theater, as well as a, a residence uh, storage included, and um, a series of smaller buildings that were built in the 50s and 60s that were visual arts spaces. So the plan 
or the concept is a series of three buildings, and you'll just see the view right here from the center of campus. Uh, we say it's from Main Street. You can see there. <laughs> um, it's a little tilted, but um, the, the concept of the design is three buildings. Maybe what I'll do is just flip to the site, flip back to this as well. Um, three smaller buildings that each house one of the one of the arts. So this side right here is music. This is the visual arts. And this is theater, and that includes a theater for about 350 people, which is one of the issues that drove the, um, the need for increased height, um, as well as a black box theater. Overall, the building is about 50,000 square feet. And as I mentioned before, it sits at the heart of the campus and replaces the barn, which is approximately here, and a series of smaller buildings here as well. As you can see from the rendering, uh, the design team worked with the existing, what we say, the vernacular architecture of the campus, utilizing pitched roofs, the existing standing steam roofs that are also on campus as well, um, and clapboard um, uh, siding, wood clapboard siding. And we are utilizing glass curtain wall to bring light into the building. Um, any questions on the, the general site plan? I can move on to some of the building elevations and talk about well, some of the I, have a, I just have a couple of questions. Sure, just sure. More housekeeping procedural sure. questions, and it's just to the CFO. Um, which one? I'm sorry. Oh. You, well, so is it, I understand you're the CFO. Is there something in our record from the trustees or whomever controls the land saying that, you know, there's the authority to be here? I something from our trustees. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of whoever holds the land, who has title to the land. Yeah. I have the signing authority for the school, so I, I can get you that document. I would just like to get something in the you. file. To, yeah. I believe you. I just want something no, in the I'll record. Get, I'll get that to you. Okay. And then with respect to the site plan, mm -hmm. um, how, how did you guys determine, it's kind of a big site plan, right? So in terms of the overall site design, was there, was there a subsequent plan that was needed, or how did you come up with this existing site plan scheme? Um, the, 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 the overall layout of the building in terms and its location of, on the campus? In terms of any setbacks or any of that? Oh, um, well, it's all within the campus, fairly far away from any lot lines or setbacks. Um, what we were looking to do with the design was to bring the arts into the center of the campus. And we are basically replacing buildings that are at th the current location. So if you look at it, the arts are still roughly in the same zone. So the idea was to keep it all in that same place. Okay. So what you're basically doing is updating the whole program. Right. Okay, Correct. taking some old decrepit, I, I don't want to use the word decrepit, <laughs> some yeah. old uh, underused buildings into right, right. a new modern facility. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Um. And so, and then the need for the variance is the height variance is based on the grading in terms uh, of? It's graded, it, it's based on the building program. So, a theater requires uh, what's called a fly loft. So, when you have a stage, all of the curtains they go up, and that uh, dimension is dictated, the dimension of the building is dictated by the height of the stage. Mm -hmm. So, in order to create, I think we note this in, in our application. A, um, you know, an educational facility that's, that's equal to their peer institutions. We, uh, and our theater consultants recommended at the stage, it's roughly actually the same proscenium height. Um, it's 13 feet, it's a big variance. 13 feet in terms of height. Correct. As it may relate to treetops and you know, landscape views and so forth right. is substantial. Right, well the one thing that we did do that recognizing not just the, the, the variance, but also the importance of scale on the campus, we took measures to reduce the scale of the wing that includes the theater. So I don't believe we have, we, we don't have a section through there, do we? No. So, but you can see here, um, this is the front half of the building, and then this is the theater wing. We have a series of staircases that step down to go into the theater, and what that allows us or it goes dip, go down into this wing of the building, that allows us to drop the building down further on the site and take advantage of the site slope. Um, because generally, the site slopes down in that direction. So is there, and I don't mean to be peppering your question, <coughs> is there a topography plan that shows what the grading is in terms of what's driving the, the need for the variance? 
Um, if we were to have a building that met the, um, the, the limited height, we would have to have our theater below grade, and we wouldn't actually be able, be able to get into the building from grade, because we have to basically take that 50 feet and drop the entire building 15 feet down into the ground. But there's no topography plan filed with us, or is there, that shows what that grade is? Not file no. okay. we, can, we can get that for you. Okay, I'm just asking to understand the elevation. All right. You're saying the existing elevation? The existing, yeah, the building. existing barn building. Yeah. Okay. It's higher. It's higher. Yeah. What, what is it now? The, the existing theater is housed in what we call the barn. And the barn is actually higher than the building that's replacing it. Which is? Uh, the elevate, the average elevation. I, I, no, a number. <laughs> so What's the, building, the height of it now? So the, the maximum ridge height of the existing barn to the street on the west is 44 feet approximately. Now, it wasn't surveyed, so that's sort of as best we, as we could calculate. We don't want that as... What do you mean? Can you explain what you mean by that? By uh, it wasn't 44 feet. Yeah, you said it wasn't surveyed, but it's 44 feet. What do you mean? We don't have an accurate <coughs> survey of the existing building. Right. We, we, didn't, we didn't physically go out and survey the ridge line of the existing building. Okay. Um, so based on photos and um, what we have in files. Sorry, I used to be a professional architectural surveyor, so maybe I can help your terminology. You as architects went out and surveyed the building a little bit, and then, or, or are you just saying that you didn't have an actual, like, certified surveyor tell you Both. that? We, we made um, approximate calculations of the elevation of the ridge of the existing yeah. bar. Okay. We have accurate calculations of the new, the new ridge. Yes. Which is the 1350. All right, so you're not sure if it's higher or not higher. That's, that's your best guess? Our best guess is that it's higher. <laughs> uh, we're, we're fairly confident uh, that it's higher. Uh, okay. Would it be safe to say approximately the same? No. Yes. It's, uh, it's, it's substantially okay. higher than the West Wing, and it might be approximately the same as the. Because the site area. slopes down about 15 feet from this point to that point. So these elevations, these cross-section elevations that you filed, you know, I'm having a hard time orienting uh, the height. Right, we have those right up there. You have those there? Okay. So Main Street, which is the elevation of these two gables at this point, that's the site slope there. And at this point here, the floor steps down within the building. Actually, the finished floor. We've dropped that building down to try to reduce the mass of it due to the theater. But that building right there that you say is the theater. Mm -hmm. The barn that's there is is higher. I'm not correct. The barn, yeah, the barn is over here and it's higher than that one. Yeah. It's we know it's 12 feet higher approximately <laughs> than this west uh, building. So it's slightly higher or approximately similar height to the east building. So you're raising the whole barn? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So when you say this visually, it's not going to be that bad. Maybe right. Worse right. That, I mean, that was our intent because <laughs> we're right in the middle of the campus. We're right next to the chapel building, which is the heart of the campus. And so our task was to make this building fit in. Did you bring any pictures? I mean, I know in terms of um, what it looks like now and then as it relates to uh, we don't have existing site photos. Do you have any? Do you have any on Thumbdrive? Okay. It's all right if you don't have them. I just, I'm just asking. I'm not yeah, trying we, to. We can follow up. We're trying to. I'm trying to visualize. You know. What's there? What it's, I, it's actually hard because there's so many buildings. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say littered around the, the campus, but there's a series of smaller buildings that have been added onto over time. 
So it's, it's hard to even, this view, it's hard to even get. So. Um, and many of those buildings also are exceeding 35 foot. Right. Yeah, I was just going to ask how does this relate to the other buildings on campus in terms of height? Um, well, that would be your best guess, right? Because you don't have any. We, don't have, well, we, could, we, sure. we could get the, the, the elevation for the Science Center, which is the most recently completed project, which did get a variance for its height because it was about 35 foot. So, and I don't know if the hockey uh, arena got the this. The Student Center also had a variance. Right. 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 The library. The library, right. right. Well, so can you can you tell us as it relates to the soil shape and topography, you know that mm -hmm. legal test that drives the request for variances? Mm -hmm. How 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 is this site special in terms of meeting the variance? How is this site special in terms of meeting the variance? Yeah. Why would we need to have that height? Yeah. Um, I think the variance is required because any theater that you build will exceed that that height, unless you dig down and have a below grade entrance to a building. So you'd have to ramp down if it was to be ADA accessible, down that 15 feet to get to the theater itself. So it's just part of the definition of the theater is it's going to be higher. It's going to be 50 feet. <laughs> so when you're asking for a variance, you have to meet a criteria of soil shape of a topography. Mm -hmm. What of those three are you asking for us to give you a variance for? Not because it's the use of the building. Mm -hmm. What on that site lets us say you need a variance? Could you repeat the three criteria? Soil, soil shape, shape, topography. It has to be a nexus in the land. Soil shape and topography. So Anthony? that's what drives it. So I'm just asking, because we didn't get a topography plan okay. in terms of showing us no. what's going on out there. Right. So it's not like a, a self-made hardship. I need it. I want it. Mm -hmm. There's, there's got to be something a little bit more for us. And I know it's only our first hearing. Right. So we're just trying to I'm just trying to get right to mm -hmm. now the existing building. Maybe if that is, in fact, already there, you're replacing what's there. Maybe that goes to it. I, it's hard to visualize. Sure. Well, my name is Anthony Cleves. I'm with Whitman and Bingham Associates, uh, civil engineers for the project. So kind of back up. So this is the really only location on the campus for the theater. It's essentially replacing the existing theater facility. So trying to locate it anywhere else really doesn't work uh, for the school. So this is where the building needs to go. And as Jason was alluding to, the nature of a theater needs an excessive height. Um, so then trying to fit that with this the existing site, the site slopes top to bottom, you know, about 15 feet or so along this, this, yeah, this line here. Um, so we have an existing topography that we have to deal with in order for it to fit in with the existing infrastructure of the campus. Again, it's, you know, this is where the theater is now, and this is where it's, it needs to go. Some of the soils, um, the soils are, some of the analysis that we've done are uh, kind of a hard pan, I guess you could say. Um, not great free draining soils. Could be some, some groundwater when you get down to, to where this basement was going to be. So if we were to try and sink that even lower, we're gonna have you know, some excessive soil issues to deal with with the foundations, um, you know, dewatering. It's, it's also going to become you know, it's, it's a very expensive project yeah. to, even, to even build that. So can I ask, are you within the Watershed Protection District? Yes. Did you request a variance for a waiver from the Watershed Protection District? We've received a permit from the Planning Board for site plan approval as well as Watershed Protection. They can't grant you a variance for Watershed Protection? Well, we didn't ask for a variance. I mean, for, for height. You still, you still would need a variance under Watershed Protection? We got a permit through them for a building within the general zone of the Watershed Protection District. The, a variance was not required for that, well, I, uh, for being in the Watershed Protection District. But, uh, right. We went through the we went through the well, process with. Well, the, the planning board, you know, can issue a, a special permit unless the request for variance is granted. So I guess I'm a little confused. I oh, mean, that. the height variance, the Watershed Protection. We didn't need a variance for the watershed protection. If you if you're within the watershed protection district, you do. You need a special permit. Correct. After you get a variance. 
Right. It's a special permit. It's, it's, I don't know. it's an allowed. It's an allowed use, um, and we have the. I have the building. I don't know if that's in our record, so we'll have to check. The bill. I have the building inspector's um, bylaw review form, okay. where it says special permit for a planning board for site plan approval and special permit for a watershed special permit. We didn't ask for anything different beyond the requirements of the town of Andover, North Andover's <laughs> bylaws. That would require a variance. Okay. Are you saying that he should go to conservation first? I didn't say okay, that. Okay, because they hear the word watershed. We did conservation as well. Yeah. So, so you got to sign off for conservation. We have conservation approval and planning board. So, go to so conservation if you're within 100 feet of a wetland. You're that was for a, that was for a different part of the project. That, but yes. That's, that's but conservation signed off on it. That's a different. So, issue. what's the problem with watershed? Jeez, the conservation know, I mean, signed I'm off. Conservation is a watershed <laughs> protection district. I'm just telling you what I recall, and uh, so we'll, we'll check. Yep. So I mean, we we I have the we'll the form from the building inspector. If you want that, it says we need a special permit. And I'm sure that's in our file. I don't know if there's a decision from the planning board in our file. Did we get a planning board decision? Okay. We have the approval. I have the approval for the planning board here too. Um, <laughs> one of the conditions they had was to make sure we get a variance from the zoning board of appeals for height. Uh, but we fulfilled their requirements as part as the special permit granting authority for the watershed. I'm just asking if you may need another variance. I'm not 100% sure on that, so we'll have to look into that. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to look into it. We'll have to look into it. I guess what, what, where would you, what do you think you might need a variance for? Any construction within the watershed protection district, I believe. You need a special permit for any work within the watershed protection district, and there are various requirements general zone, non-discharge zone, non-disturbance zone. Oh, okay. Right? And there are regulations for each of them. And which zone are you falling in? We're mostly in the general zone. Oh, you're not in the non-disturbance zone? Correct. Okay. Well, then what, what do you mean by mostly? We have a little That's bit helpful. Of, we have a little bit of work right here in the non-discharge zone. So we are not doing any work in the non-disturbance zone. Okay. We went through We didn't have we don't have it in our record. That's why I'm asking. I don't think I don't think it's in our zoning file. He, excuse me, he's just asking so you can go forward. It's not, it's not I, being... Uh, no, I understand, but I mean, we, we went through... If you require another variance, then we just want to have it all I get covered. that. We went through two months of permitting for the planning board, and then to now here we need a variance for I the planning board. I appreciate that, but I wasn't at any of your planning board. We, none of us were. You're here now, so it's not in our file. I don't know what to tell you. That's why I'm asking. Okay. So, okay, so you're not... You're, you're in the general zone of that district. You're not in the discharge zone. Okay. That's helpful. Well, we are in the watershed protection district, absolutely. Okay. But yeah. you're not in the discharge. That's fine. Correct. So how many feet, how far away from the lake are you? How far from the lake? Yeah. That, that's 12, almost 1,300 feet. Great. Okay. So if I can, I, just so I understand, so we're here for a height variance. I know that's what you asked. Um, but so as part of the planning wood process, do you always review every project to make sure it doesn't need a variance? I guess I'm just confused. Well, we're having a public hearing. You no, know, I, I understand so, that. So you're here because of your request? Right, and, and for, we'll for a height you. variance. Um, yeah. And so I think if we would have, I'm just hoping this, this because you're questioning the watershed protection permitting process. You, you may have answered my question on that. Sounds okay. like maybe you're okay on that. Okay. I mean, that, if just bringing be, it up. I'm just asking. Okay. Just like I said, I don't have your planning board file, so all we have is what's before us. So, so did that partially answer some of the information about the soils and the shapes, or? Well, I understand what you want to do. Do you guys have any questions? I, I mean, I'd like to see a topography plan to see that the actual slope of what you're saying, and just okay. just to see that, and you know, see where and see the actual existing building, the height of that. I'd like right. to see what's around you. Is there anything else that, that's 48 feet? You know, I mean, you don't want something that's right. going to be everything's one story, then all of a sudden you have these right. three stories sticking right. out in the middle. So we do have, we do have one printout here. 
so this is a view of some of the other buildings. So that's the gym next to it, the dining hall there. This is the theater, um, and some other buildings on campus. Is the gym higher? Or? Uh, port, well, one portion that's sort of off the volleyball court. I don't know if it's actually higher, but it's, it's still a, a tall volume. So, would this be the highest building on the property, or is there something higher? Just visually. Um, the, the science building would. Yeah. Probably. The science. Is it visually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's on a hill. Um, some of the other buildings at the science center might be taller, but it's down on not on the hill. So. When was that built? The Science Center, 2008. And it also does not have the gable roof, so the, the yeah. walls are certainly taller. Yeah, it's flat roof. You know, we, um, I definitely think the uh, the plan is helpful for the record. You know, sometimes with projects like this, we like to visit and, and just see, try to visualize exactly Absolutely. what you're sure. doing and what the height is, and right. it, you know, sometimes it's very helpful. To see what's there and yeah, and these are all what's from down. a SketchUp 3D model, and if we can be there, we can spin you around in the model and give you a walkthrough as well. So if that's <coughs> something, the sidewalk. If there's something you're open to. Yeah, the the board has certainly done that in the past. Yeah, you know. In a day and time, we'll be there. Sure. Um, are there any abutters here as it relates to this project? I think not. But we would like to ask. Anyone who got notice? you think in the topography? Uh, yeah, I think, that, again, a topography plan for me, existing height of what's there. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the existing height of the existing barn and the other correct. buildings that are going to be demolished. Yes, just, okay. to, just to have, a, I mean, if you're replacing a, a high, build, you know, a low, build, mm -hmm. just. And so, the, so my understanding is the way the height it. was measured, Mr. Belanger, was the average grade around the building? That's correct. I understand correctly. It's okay. You don't have to. Leave. It's okay. It's okay. I think the, if you can correct me, the height from one grade to the highest ridge is somewhere around 61 feet on one side. And because they're connecting the two buildings together, yeah. and that separation walls that proposed to exist is all taken as one building that's complete. Okay. And when they take the average calculations, that's why they have the difference. Sure. So, so there's definitely some difference in the grade there. Yes, there is. Yeah. So I think if we can understand that grade difference a little bit more, uh -huh. that might help, you know, sure. be what drives the, you know, yeah. what's driving the yeah, If we're going to do a site walk, you'll really understand yeah. it. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And I can just quickly touch upon it. Well, we, we have this plan here to, to look at. You may not have it in your package. But for orientation, Great Pond Road is up here. The lake way way down here so this is a, a main a driveway through the campus dining hall the existing uh, arts center here so this is the, the high side of of the uh, of the building so I think we have about a 20 24 foot height here on the on the front side and then as you continue down uh, this this section of the building is a little taller than this section plus we lose the grade change so the highest difference in elevation is down here where we have the 61 <coughs> feet okay. there. And then it varies all throughout the areas there. So. And what I, can also, what I can show you is, I'll uh, bring this over, um, a view of the site that's analogous to this image right here. So if you look at that point right there, that's similar to that which is the barn. So the barn is much higher on that side and it's about, um, what were we saying it was above, above Main Street? About 40 feet. 40 feet above Main Street. And then that's what's being removed. And so our volume of the um, theater is sort of back here. So that's where you see this larger portion of the building. So this was not provided to us. This was in that. But it's still kind of a guess on the height, right? It's, and it's, yeah, we, and we it's, can get. And the grade does, it looks like the grade changes. Yeah, it, 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 it slows down across the site. Sure. And that's where you see that retaining wall there and that slope down there. Okay. Um, if it helps, we can, can we sort of amend our submission to include those docks or 
Oh, yeah. Once you're it's not going to be yeah. closed. So you can okay. present. So we can add some supporting. So I think what, what, what might be helpful is if, if you guys are amenable to coming back in May, uh, we can get that letter, yeah. you know, in terms of the authority from the land title holder. And then you could coordinate a, a visit to uh, sure. take a look at it for those who wants to go and understand the topography a little more. Mm -hmm. uh, just for the record, I don't like getting something as intense and as com complex as this plan at the meeting because I like to look at it prior and I like to, if you could submit it prior to the meeting so we can review it. I mean, if you're going to present me plan, uh, you know, a 10 page plan, it's hard for me to right. be prepared yeah, yeah. Sure. and look at it and give you a, um, an informed decision. Sure. That's just me. <laughs> you're right. That's been me for 20 plus years, so that's me not going to be changing. Ms. McIntyre has not changed that view in a long time. 20 plus. 20 plus. I wasn't going to say it. Oh. So, uh, all right. I mean, I think that's very helpful. And, uh, you know, we could, if the board's so inclined, we could agree to continue to the um, meeting. Just, just to be clear, I mean, what I would like is the other building heights, mm -hmm. um, a picture of what's there. Sure. If you could, I mean, that's yeah, not, it's just yeah. visually, visually. Um, um, what else? Uh, Anything relevant that you want to The topo record? plan. Anything so, relevant. It should go yep. into the record. Sure. Definitely the topo plan and um, replace existing theater. That's what I have. And I think the height, more more of the height. Okay. When you're providing the topographic information, um, I would suggest also just being clear about the existing versus great. Sure. With any, uh, sure. So, uh, Sure. Um, did you want to check on the watershed variance special permit? You, you know what? I, I I'm fairly satisfied okay. just in terms of that zone. We'll, we'll double check the file yeah, if we, anything we can comes up. The the uh, approval too for you and make that yeah. part of the package. That'd be That's great. Helpful. Yeah. yeah. That's helpful absolutely. because then we can. Yeah, absolutely. Then we're all on the same page. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know? So I spoke. Does anyone else want to see anything else? <laughs> All right, um, if we're all set, we could uh, hear a motion to continue. What's the May, May, May 9th, is that the date? I'll make a motion to continue the hearing to May 9th. May 9th, is that what you I'll second that motion. Motion second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Stan, continue it. And, uh, and then I'll just have a form for you to sign. The office will will coordinate with us as far as a site walk. With, with yeah, Meryl will, is, uh, you know, she's great. She helps keep Perfect. this whole ship together, so <laughs> Perfect. that's great. Okay. great. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Glad Appreciate you. it. I just misplaced my agenda. Where did I put it? Did I take it? Seriously, did I put that? Seriously, just lose that. Um, uh, could you, you take my agenda? Is, no, Church Street is next to Oh, Church Street? Okay. All right, I guess we'll get to Church Street next. Can't find my agenda. Did you take it? Church Street? No, no, because I wrote on mine. What's this one? Okay, Mr. Caffrey, um, we'll open the hearing for Church Street. And, uh, Matt Caffrey representing the first. Oh, notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing at the Town Hall located at 120 Main Street, North Andover, Massachusetts, on Tuesday, April 11, 2017, at 7 30 p.m., to all parties interested in the petition of. Edward G. Collin for property 5658 Church Street, map 041.0, parcel 040, North Andover, Massachusetts, 0845 in the GB zoning district. This is an appeal of the building inspector's determination that the use of the property is in violation of section 4.131 of the zoning bylaw and the issuance of a cease and desist order to cease operating a groundskeeping business at 5658 Church Street. Applications supporting materials are available for review at the Office of the Zoning Department located at 120 Main Street, North Andover, Mass. Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday for the hours 8 to 4, Tuesday from the hours 8 to 5.30, and Friday from 8 to 11.30 by order of the Board of Appeals, Albert P. Manzley III, Esquire, Chairman. Okay, great. Thank you. 
So, um, Mr. Caffrey, just so you know, Attorney Caffrey, before you get started, you know, we're a five person board. Uh, tonight we have five regular members and one alternate, uh, Attorney Jacobs. So, uh, I believe all regular members are here and, and present. Uh, this is a different kind of, we hear these occasionally. They don't come in, the building inspector appeal. Um, so they do come in. Um, they do require um, uh, four votes uh, to overturn. Um, but we'll see where we are in terms of the re what you're looking for. Did, did you submit um, requested findings in terms of yes. findings that you're looking for us to make? Yes. yes I did. Yeah. Okay. You should have those, and if you don't, I have an extra copy, one extra copy. Yeah. This is the March 22nd. Okay, so the way I think we'll handle this is uh, we'll give you an opportunity to talk. Yep. Um, we'll give Mr. Belanger an opportunity to present anything he wants to present, and the board's exhausted that. If there's any uh, relevant input from statutory abutters, abutters within 300 feet that are noticed to be here, we'll give you an opportunity to talk to. Just be mindful that we do have a lot on yes. the docket tonight. That's not to take away from anybody's right to be heard, so everyone's going to get their chance. But thank you. Okay. Thank you. I, and I, thank you, Mr. Chairman and um, members of the board. My name is Matt Caffrey. I represent Ed, Ted Collin, who's the owner of 5658 Church Street. This is a, an appeal of the building inspector's cease and desist order uh, to Mr. Collin regarding his landscaping business. Before I, and I am mindful of time, uh, Mr. Chairman, before I begin, um, I do have supplemental materials. I'd like to get, give the, um, anyone in the audience an opportunity to see them. Uh, these consist of a letter of support from uh, Mr. Donald R. Elliott, uh, as well as a petition that's been signed by 14 uh, North Andover residents and six photographs of the property as it is, as it was on Sunday of this week, this past weekend. Uh, so I'm happy Can to- Can you give uh, a copy to Mr. Belanger? Mr. Belanger would need yeah, a copy. I'd be happy to show Mr. Belanger first. And then, <coughs> so, uh, well, that's and then you have them for us, for the record? I, I, I'm gonna hand those, those, that just came to me tonight. The, um, the uh, petition came to me tonight. Oh, I uh, see. But I do have photo the photos, I have for several sets of those. I'm happy to circulate those to the board while Mr. Belanger's looking at them. Well, I, so, all right, so we'll, we'll put them in, we'll put them in the record in terms of whatever you want us to take, and, you know, we'll review them. Okay. You know, so that's, that's fine. Right. And just are the sig them. signatories of butters? These are, um, s some of them are butters, and some are not, each has listed their address. So there are 14 of them, and I'll ask the board to take a look. This is a petition in support, uh, moral support, if you will, uh, to allow Mr. Collin to continue to operate. These are all folks who know him and are aware of his business and his operation. All right. All right. So these are the same photographs, uh, column one through six, that Mr. Belanger has in his city. Oh, great. All right, so we'll mark them one through six. Anyone else want to see? Yes. Can we see them? Yes. Yeah, you uh, did. Uh, 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 you guys can have them first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> great. Let's get a little looky see. Well, which, whichever ones we're going to take, I just want to make sure the right ones, because I'll mark them and we'll, yeah. we'll put them as received and we'll That's fine. put them in the file. Right? That's fine. All right. Um, if you're ready, I'll go ahead and just. Yeah, we're I'll, ready. I'm going to do as, uh, as, as brief a presentation as I can because I think all of this is laid out fairly neatly in our written appeal. Um, so, again, uh, this property, many of you are probably familiar with uh, Church Street, which is right downtown. It's a general business district. And Mr. Collin uh, has lived at that property since 1969. His parents, uh, 1970, his parents uh, bought the property. And as um, laid out in his affidavit, which is attached to our appeal, uh, Mr. Collin has operated a landscaping business from that property since 1976. So one of the things that I think we have to sort of and I, and I want to make sure the board is thinking about this as we have, there are probably three moving parts to this appeal. Um, the first is the uh, allegation by the building inspector that there was debris and other material uh, uh, detritus around the property on uh, his inspection on December 20th. And without getting into the details of what the inspector saw or his characterization of that material, I think as you, you will agree, 
that my client's actions since then, uh, which are evidenced in the photographs you have in front of you, have been to clean all that up. Uh, the, I think the property looks um, obviously uh, in order, uh, according to the photographs, as of Sunday. And um, I don't believe that that any longer, even if it was a condition uh, that existed at the property at the time the, inspect the inspection was made on January 20 December 20th, is, uh, is any longer uh, an issue at the property. So the first issue, the first moving part was the condition of the property. We think we've addressed that. The second was uh, the parking of a commercial vehicle at the property during the inspection. And um, again, we have uh, that, pro that vehicle is a, is a vehicle that Mr. Collin uses both for personal use as well as in his business. And that vehicle has been uh, and is currently being parked uh, because it's a commercial vehicle uh, around the back of the property with the other commercial vehicles. So we think that we've dealt with that issue. Uh, the meat of this appeal, uh, frankly, uh, members of the board, has to do with the zoning status of the property. And I don't want to um, lecture the board on the zoning code. That's not my job. I'm going to make out, I'm going to point out three things that I see. And then um, I, I think they're self-evident in the zoning statute, zoning bylaw. Uh, but they are the core of our, our, our appeal. The first is that we're in a general business district. And in a general business district, office uses are permitted. Um, and in fact, if you look at the summary of use table, um, business and other office uses are permitted, as well as contractors' yards. And in fact, that's what we have going on in this case. We have a business office for Mr. Collins' business, which is a land groundskeeping business. We have a yard, uh, which is, contains equipment and other material uh, that he needs to use in his business which is a classic contractor's yard. This is all laid out in the table of uses, and I'll ask the board if they, uh, obviously they can, they can refer to that themselves. So these fall squarely within uh, the general business district uh, in the nature of what we expect to see in the general business district. And again, I'd ask the board to take a look at the kinds of businesses that are permitted in the GB district, uh, but things like uh, you know, uh, uh, paint, uh, auto paint facilities and this sort of thing are actually allowed in the GB district. I'm not saying that's what we are, but I'm saying that the nature of the beast here is that uh, the general business district is for business, and that's what we have going on. So that's, this, that's the second piece of the puzzle, as far as we're concerned. Um, and I, in terms of how I get to that, that particular uh, conclusion, I'll note that under uh, section 4.131, um, a groundskeeping business is permitted as, quote, a mercantile activity, which relates to trade, and I've given the board a definition of mercantile, not involving manufacturing. 4.1311. Um, so this involves, our business involves or relates to the trade of landscaping. That's what we do. We're a landscaper. 4.13, yeah, 1311. And if you look at the language there, it specifically allows for that. So we believe that we're squarely within uh, the general business district classification for... With 4.136, the Watershed Protection Division. Yeah. <laughs> Please, thank you. Um, and then lastly, even if somehow we didn't fall right within the allowed uses as of right in the general business district, which we do, um, we've laid out, I think, um, an undisputed case that Mr. Collins' business predates um, the zoning code in terms of those use limitations. We are a pre-existing non-conforming use. Mr. Collins has been there since 1976. Um, and I have not received from the zoning, uh, from, rather from the building inspector's office or from, or from town council, anything uh, to the contrary. Um, it doesn't appear to be a dispute that Mr. Collins has, uh, in fact, um, been at the property since that time. So. I would ask the board to reverse the decision of the zoning uh, of the building inspector. I have provided um, a request for specific findings in my letter of March 22nd, um, and all of those uh, kind of follow my argument tonight, which are that these are the key aspects of why it is that we are in allowed use in the GB district. Um, and then I, I want to just address one other thing that came up, not in the building inspector's decision uh, in his order, which is extremely limited. If you look at his order, it's a very narrow order. 
uh, but it has come up in my discussions with town council and the building inspector, which relates to the rental units that are at that property. And there are rental units at that property. And um, those, again, are pre-existing non-conforming. Mr. Uh, Collins' parents bought that property in 1970. Those un rental units have been there ever since. And there's just no basis that I have been able to find. And I'm, I'm certainly made mistakes in my life, but I, no basis for uh, calling them anything but a pre-existing non-conforming use. So they can continue until some evidence is produced that they're, they're not legal at that, at, at that location. Are you so, being fined? I have been, we've been threatened, uh, Mr. Chairman, with fines of up to $1,000 a day. Mr. Collin has ceased um, operating his business as a groundskeeper. However, he does plow for North Andover. Um, and I want to point out that you'll see some plows in those photos. And you're, I want the board to be aware the reason that there are four or five plows in that uh, picture is because Mr. Collin plows for the town. That's what he does. One of his, what do the landscapers do in the off season? This is one of the things they well, do and he I needs just, those. Just for a point of clarification, um, you, can, you can park a vehicle in the driveways, right? That's what we're doing. Have you been told you can't park a, a vehicle that has a plow on it? A um, little unclear, Mr. Chairman. I believe the, the overall, if you look at the building inspector's decision, the order, it references just commercial vehicles um, that he saw. I have interpreted that through my meetings with him and with town council to mean no, they don't, they, it, the concern is a commercial vehicle parked in front of the residence. That seems to be the issue. On the, on the, on street? the street? That seems to be the How much parking issue. do you have within the lot itself? Quite a bit, uh, Mr. Chairman. That photo that shows the trucks parked in a row, um, we can get, uh, we own, my client owns all the way to when the you say that photo, let's just, uh, it's number three? Number. Because I got six of them. Yeah, column three. Okay, column three. And if you can see mm -hmm. that truck, the box truck, which is located to the far side, that's still on Mr. Collins' property. All of that area is available for trucks. Where do your tenants park? Uh, tenant will park. We just have, we've just got our first tenant in a while, um, and that tenant is parking on the street right now, uh, out in front like other people do. I took photos of the street specifically so that you could see that other folks are parking on the street. That's how, many, how many tenants do you have? Uh, is it a three-family? We have a one, and it's a one, yes, he lives in one unit, and then there are two other units on the so other it's a side. Three family, three family with how many bedrooms in each unit? Uh, two, two, one on each, four on the other side. My side has two bedrooms. Three bedrooms. So you need six parking spots for that house? I think you would if you were bringing it online today. But I, we're not. This is a pre existing non conforming use. What happens well, in the wintertime when you're going to take the cars off the street? Sorry again? What happens in the wintertime? When they take the cars off the street? When the cars have to go off the street. We have off parking for <clears throat> Rosemary Gunn for her tenants. Rosemary Stabile for her tenants. So it's odd side parking in the winter. She got it for her tenants because her tenants don't have a place to park too. You know? Okay, so just to, so the parking goes, so you have how many bedrooms? You have two units? Two units, one bedroom each unit. Two units with one bedroom each. And then how, about, how many bedrooms? On my side, I have uh, two, uh, two on the second floor and uh, an attic room that's kind of like a bedroom that needs to be repaired. Sounds like four. Are the other two units rented out? No, one, one of the other units is rented so out. One, one person, is vacant. One person, one car. One person, yeah. one car. It, one it, person, it, one car. it matters how many bedrooms, depends. It could be rented out tomorrow, you don't know. Yeah. So I drove by on my way here. I didn't look like that. I saw seven trucks in the driveway with numerous plows. Um, well, I don't know where your tenants are going to park, and that's on the side street. I specifically drove by on my way here just to see what it would be, and I did count seven trucks I, um, with, I with plows in the way as well. So it was not, and there was a little, there was a little more debris than what you do have in the picture. So it was. But you have but you have garages too in your picture, so I'm a little, so I'm a little. <coughs> if that's a side, is the garage yours behind the lot? Yeah, yes. it's filled up with lawn equipment. It's got lawn equipment and other materials in it. But they are garages, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. In the context yeah. of, so did is there a, is is there a parking plan? Do you have a a, a parking plan or a site plan that's been done to so, show existing? So we had. 
we submitted to the building inspector a plan, a self-sketched plan of kind of how we wanted to park the vehicles. And, I, and I'm going to let the building inspector speak for himself. The response was we needed to have a survey done or some kind of um, plot plan done uh, to scale. And um, frankly, it, the answer is we haven't had time to do that, and it's very expensive. And yeah. it's a very costly thing to undertake. Um, but you would um, have to do it after the fact? I mean, you're not applying for anything. We're not. We're, we're in a position here, and I uh, thank you. I, we're in a position here where I, I believe we are pre existing non conforming use or we are an allowed use. This is a contractor's yard, and that's what it is. And contractor's yards have trucks in them, and they have material in them, and that's what they look like. And I'm having, I guess I'm having an issue trying to understand how this yard, which looks like a contractor's yard, has to look different than that. And that's kind of where we're coming from. Did a contractor's yard have to be parked in the back? Is that the, is that what I, are this, because this is on the side. So in, in the other issue that I'm having is because it is a three family and you do have the potential to have tenants in there to have six additional cars that ha would have no place to park. You only have two in the front of the house and that's it. So and then because this is all trucks and, and gear for the contractor's yard, which it's rightfully so, there's no place for them to park. So perhaps, Perhaps the board wants to see some uh, something from us that would indicate how we would handle a situation should it come up where we have additional <laughs> tenants. But in um, your existing use, how how are you using it again in the context of the building? How is how is the building being used as in terms of the the drive of parking? The parking is and again I took these photos. I, this wasn't staged or anything. I took these photos when I got there on Sunday. I got out of my car. I took a couple of photos and I got back in my car. Seven o'clock. Um, and and this is how it appeared at that time. And um, all I can say is that we would. This is how it's being used currently. Uh, he's storing these vehicles there. He uses them in his business. A very important point. Every vehicle that you see in this picture is registered, with the exception of one, which is being sold. Uh, we're going to be down one. You can see the big for sale sign. I think sign. there's one in the back with the top over it as well that I don't think is. A sander? Yeah. A sander. So we're trying to make room. We're trying to make room. And we're, our goal is to, is to get rid of at least that truck, which is for sale, which will open up another spot. But if the concern is, I, I guess what I want to know and what, I'm, what we're looking for here is there's a, it's, in terms of the, free, the, uh, the intensity of the use, that's one thing. But in terms of whether it's an allowable use, that's something completely different. It's allowable use as a three-family, and it's an allowable use. As, and so you have conflicting uses on the property. And you're using it for one thing, but you can use it for another thing. So my issue is, where are you these people going to park? Right. You, can, you can use it from both, and you can use it for both properly. Right. Can I ask you? Is my concern. Have Understood. you asked the fire department how they feel with all these vehicles down there? Well, before we get to the building, I want to let Mr. Kemp, because yep. Mr. Blanche is going to get his own opportunity okay. to I'm present. Sorry. And I'm mindful I just want to keep it even, yep. if that's okay. Yep, I'm mindful of time, and I, I, I don't, if you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them, but I, I do see that we're. No, we don't want to. No, no I, we're this not is rushing time. you. Absolutely oh, okay. not. We're not don't, rushing you. Absolutely you know, we're, not. You know, we're in for the long haul. So we, we just, I just want to keep it even because it's kind of like the aggrieved party type situation, you know, you get, everyone gets their equal time to talk. So I know that uh, there are some folks here who, uh, and I don't know how you, how you do this, whether you, you open it up to um, abutters to be able to speak after Mr. After Mr. After Mr. Mr. Belanger would present his, his side of it. So I mean, I guess, you know, we may have, the board may have more questions for you. I, sure. I was hearing a different question from what you were asking as far as, you know, how's the property being used. I think I heard yeah. you uh, answer that the exterior is being used as a contractor's yard, which is an allowed use by the, in the GB by the table. Um, but what I was hearing, and I'm, I'm still a little bit fuzzy on it, unfortunately, is 56 to 58 church, the structure, the building itself, mm -hmm. is three residential units? Correct. Mr. Collin lives in one of those units? Correct. Okay. If you, it's a, like a duplex, Yep. but one side is his, one whole half, and then the other half has two units. Okay. In the yard area where the trucks is, is that a separate lot, or is it all one lot? One lot. Is it an oversized lot? Uh, what's, what's, um, I don't what's know the what's size a, of it. It's a good question. Uh, I have the card. Um, or the I, don't, I don't know size. that off the top of my head. All right. um, That's okay. I don't mean to put you on the spot. No, it goes right to the It's surprising. It goes right to the edge. For the it's area, right. it's a larger size. I'm just trying to understand the, the nature of one tax bill. One tax bill. The house that's on the corner there, as you face the property, there's a house on the corner to the right. Mm -hmm. How far is that from, from the lot line? 
Um, hmm. The one that's, as you're looking at our house, the one to the right? To the one to the right, yeah. Yeah, it's right on the line. I mean, I'm telling you. I that mean, that house is on its own lot line. He had to give an easement to his neighbor so they can use a ladder to go up and paint their okay. house. Right. So okay. this lot line is, you know, this is probably an older section of town, I'm guessing. So this line comes right down mm -hmm. the side of the building, which is why you see his truck. I should have angled it a little bit differently, but the truck is parked right along that lot line. Is that the red one? No, the no. this is the box. I'm talking about the box truck. Oh, the box truck, okay. Yeah. So, you know, there are things that we, um, you know, we look at and we, you know, I, I understand, I think, perhaps some of the concern is, is appearance, and I understand that. And we have signaled, uh, tried to signal to the building inspector and town council that we'd like to work with them on this, but we haven't been able to get there yet. So there's a lot of moving parts. I mean, there's a lot of... I mean, it seems like there's a lot. So there was a complaint issued that caused, do you know who complained? I do not. We were, I looked in the file. I didn't see it. Okay. So you can't, you don't know who's filing the complaint? I don't know that it, I, I agree with, Bill Inspector made uh, the observation. I think he's right. It doesn't really matter. Uh, what really matters is. You don't think you have a right to confront your accuser? Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> I do. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is get to the end of this. Uh, get ourselves back on our feet. This is costing Mr. Collin a tremendous amount of money. He can't work. Um, so this is, there's a serious issue here, a financial issue. Work? Because it's, he has to see yeah. Every day that goes by, we're in, now we're in the season. It says he should be cleaning yards and such. So, well, how, so <clears throat> there's a cease and desist with respect to this property. How is he able to operate his business in the interim? He's, he's got a, he goes up to Methuen. He has a trailer up in Methuen, and he'll go and get you know, one item out of that. But he can't operate out of this property. Well, he lives there, right? He does, but the order says cease and desist. No so more groundskeeping. So if he was to take one of these plows mm -hmm. and drive it off the lot and park it somewhere else, he could still use that vehicle, correct? I, we're in this, we're in the zone. Why can't you drive it with a plow? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Yeah. I, mean, in, I don't get it. We were told that it was okay if he plowed for town in North Andover during the last storm, so he did. Uh, so that happened. Uh, but other than that. Um, okay. Well, we don't want to prejudge anything because, no. you know, I want. I, I apologize because I don't want to get ahead of myself. I want to give Mr. Belanger yes. a fair opportunity to present, you know, because he's got a hard role, you know, and it's not an easy job um, to be the inspector of buildings and to and, and to be the zoning enforcement officer. It's a very hard job. It's got a lot of uh, discretion and authority, and he he deserves a fair chance to be heard. And we want to work with him, and we want to work with the town. We're, we're not interested in, in anything but getting to the end of this so that we can get our business back up and running. And, and in your neighborhood as well. I mean, Correct. you want to do a nice little triangle to have everything. Correct. <laughs> That's the goal. All right, so just to clear, just to close out, Mr. Caffrey, your, the findings that you're looking for us to make are what? Uh, they should be in that March 22nd letter. Um, and it basically runs through the six items that we believe the board needs to uh, find regarding the, uh, the cease and desist order, mm -hmm. condition of the property, parking and commercial vehicle, the zoning status um, as a groundskeeping business, as a contractor's yard, and then as the non-conforming use. So we think that all of those findings get us to a place where um, he continues to operate. We are, we are very well aware we need to operate in a responsible manner and in a reasonable manner, and we're ready to do that. So. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Joe. Mr. Belanger, you're welcome to go there or sit over here wherever you're most comfortable. You know, whatever help makes it easy, for, or sit at the table if you want. Whatever makes it easy for you. I think this is the first time you're at our board tonight. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Welcome. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, you're not going to come back Lange, after I'm the <laughs> building official. And um, I do have some copies for everybody as well. Sure. If I could pass them out. Or... Copies of what? Um, I have a one set is a copy of the census card and then some photos that were taken on the 10th. As well, I made some copies for everybody. Um, oh,
in his area. Another so copy if you guys want out. to pass around. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Belanger, do we have, we have one more? File? If you uh, don't have an extra one. No, you do. Right here. Oh. No, right uh, here. No, we got it. Right there, sorry. Yeah. Someone stole too. Oh, okay. Do you have this? Okay. So we'll, we'll give this to the file too. Care for you of all this, right? Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Caffey is correct that the from the uh, initial uh, letter that was written, and the property has been cleaned up, but this, in my opinion, is still a long way to go. Um, and that being said, on the records that we have with the assessor's office, uh, going back. We have, a, I have it as a two family, and the assessor puts it as a code, uh, assessor's code is 104, which is for a two family. Uh, every, all the records and a lot of stuff I'm looking at, it has it as 5658 Church Street. I don't see where it's mentioned where it says another number for another unit or something. So on my records, it shows, unless uh, it could be presented to me otherwise, and I'll be more than open to look at whatever the, there is out there. Sure. Um, I have it as a one and two family. And residents in that zone, it's not an allowed use, but it is a legal non-conforming uh, residential use that's there because the residential part was pre-zoning. Yeah. The part that makes it in the violation is when the business came in, although that the business is a legal use to come in, it's, it's going into uh, on a property that has a non-conforming use, which I believe uh, triggers a finding at minimum because now you're expanding into the property where it has a non-conforming use to begin with. And then you have the contractors, you have the landscaping business. Well, which part of the use is non-conforming? Residential. Isn't that allowed under in the- a, In a general residence zone. Isn't it allowed? I don't allowed? believe it is. Residential is allowed under GB, isn't it? As I recall, let's check. As a uh, multiple family, um, section six of four one three one says residential use where such use is not more than fifty percent of the total floor space in the structure. So it may be allowed, but the code itself is limiting the residential. Well, the, use. So the whole structure is a residential. So in general business, in the table of uses, it says it says one family. No. <laughs> you right? can't have one family. You can't have one family, but you can have multifamily? <laughs> no, it says one family, no. Two and family. when you go down to a multifamily, I believe you get the same answer. Two, Two family. family dwelling, no. Correct. So that's the nonconformity. Is there a multifamily? But it can be, but the bio is 50%. 50% of the structure you could have as a residential. Sure. If you have the other part. Uh, in the general business zone, which would be running a business. Is this part of the overlay district, too, that was approved a few years back? 
I don't believe so. The downtown uh, overlay? We don't, we don't, okay. I think it just falls on the skirt of that. Okay. So you want them to choose either a contractor's yard or a two-family? Well, if you have the two, you need to go for a finding. And then what I've asked for was a plot plan. The reason why I asked, one thing I asked for was a plot plan is so I could see the layout of the land. Do we have enough land in there? Because I believe the land, when you get into general business on the minimum size lot, which would be triggered on that part, setbacks on some other issues may not. Um, but you know, but you but agree those would, uses are pre-existing though from the zoning. Like from what, it was obviously residential and fell Well, the residential part, the legal non-conforming. If, if, you know, obviously the GB zone, when it ever got approved, it overlapped. Well, I don't have permits for anything at all as far as the business goes. Yeah. All I have is a statement from Mr. Collin that says, and I, and I don't have any reason not to believe him, that in 1976, and even though zoning started in 72, but in 1976 that he had, had a, um, his vehicle and he was using the trunk of his vehicle to, uh, you know, put lawnmowers and stuff like that and he was fixing them. But you don't know and when this became the GB zone. This could have been a residential zone in 76, right? Or whatever. I mean, the general business yeah. zone is... We get, and that would make it non-conforming. That's, that's what drives the non-conforming, yeah. And then in 1980, he states is when he got, he got his first truck. I'm assuming it was a truck with a plow so we could do both landscaping and plowing. Sure. Which would fit more with what he has today. And since then, it's expanded. And over the past several years, there's been complaints um, on, on, for different things uh, with the apartments from the health department or also with the vehicles in the street and stuff that fashion, where due to the expansion of the business, finding a place to park. So the residences that, for that space with the, two, with the two units would require four parking spaces. I don't, I get to see a plot plan to show me the four parking spaces. <coughs> and then the floor layouts, there's another thing I, uh, I asked for on the uh, building. And that's so I could see, okay, what part is the apartments and what part is the business or where is it functioning from as far as that part. He doesn't have a setup outside to run his office or business or anything. So it needs to be running from inside. So I don't have anything that gives me a layout of anything. Without the benefit of permits or anything to that fashion or an occupancy for a business which would have been acquired back since even far back as 75 and opening up a business. Uh, you mean you like a DBA get, certificate? No, you would get building permits from the building department when you're opening up a business to have a stick of occupancy but you would get uh, that de facto if he already existed? He would well, if it was prior to 1975, yes, but in 1975, that was even required at that point in the state of Massachusetts. Well, for whatever reason, he wasn't required then. To well, do, or nobody I don't have any it. records of any business yeah. there at all throughout the years, so I'm taking well, for his word that, okay, yes, he did start in 76 at one part, working out of his trunk, yeah. running a business, and then... 1980 comes along and he bought himself a truck and he's succeeding and it's a wonderful thing. But there was there was a point in time when when the t community development was occupying a, a structure in town, leasing a structure and it flooded and there were a lot of building records that were destroyed or flooded out or, or thrown I'm, out. I'm not aware of this or if I don't have My anything. institutional memory is that that happened. Okay. I'm not saying that there's any, I, I don't know what records well, were. And, and I'm putting that on us as on you know, on, on if he has Mr. them, he, Collins he to show me, okay, show me something that I can work with in that part of it. Uh -huh. And if I had a plot plan and I could see that we have the, you know, parking for the tenants, and then he has parking to put his vehicles, and you could see, then I'd be at least be able to give a, a proper, uh, you know, plan review and zoning review. So the one issue is the be parking. more accurate in that part of it. Parking is a one issue. The other issue would be there's two units there. I found out recently that in uh, the appeal where it said three units, uh, there was another letter that was stated back um, that it was from uh, Mr. McCaffrey, it was uh, two units in the building. I don't know which one it is. So that's, so a, di it, that's a different issue though, right? That's well, it's a combined issue. As it relates to operating his business, the three units, well, how, the, how does that tie to the operation? They're two in the same because we're on the same property with the, with the residential structures where the where the combined, it's a mixed use. So uh -huh. how much is allowed to be the residential at 50% of the building 
and then the other 50% could be the business. So by bringing in the business, you're triggering a finding for that, which would have to go before to get approved for it. And that's the part I don't have. The third part where I see as far as a visual from the street as an observation, which was purely my observation at the time, because I didn't enter onto the property, was there are three garage bays. They do look like they're packed with debris. And I don't have anything to say otherwise that they are. Although, as you can see in the photos yeah. here, you do have some of the vehicles, you do have some of the uh, repairs, or some of the stuff that they do work on the vehicles on the property. You know, the, I still don't have anything on the garage bays on what's in there. Um, so, I mean, one of my concerns yeah. in, in the Commonwealth, but more so here in, in the, the community, is the life safety issues of the property, of the, you know, the people, and, and that is, as we all have in that fashion. And that's the part I wish to satisfy and that. And I need the three of them to connect to do so. Um, would, you, when you, when you lost me there for a second. Which parts do you need to connect? To well, I need the plot plan that shows me the layout where all the parking is. Yeah. I need the floor plans that, that show me what the layout in the building is. And I don't have any idea what's but going you, on with the garages. I haven't, I haven't been, I haven't had a chance to go through yeah. and do a walkthrough, uh, which typically I do with the fire department and the health department to determine. If someone was looking for a new permit, I, I understand, but I'm a little fuzzy on the de facto where he's already uh -huh. existing that you would need him to do all that stuff and shut down his business. I'm a little fuzzy on that. Well, the, the only way that I have, I have the two residential units, which I don't know what's going on there, and I have all these vehicles that are packed in there uh, with the fuel and everything else. Well, he told you so, he lives in one of them, right? He lives in one of them. Yes. So, and then one's not rented, but now it's, is it a two unit or is it a three unit? I don't have any permits for anything. I don't have any, I don't know if things were done correctly. I, this, I don't. Do you have any reason to believe that it was built within the past 12 months? Whatever is existing, it's existing, right? So the question I have is, how far back do you go on something that's existing just because well, there's no records? Well, if I, if I don't have any records to show me and what I see here is for a two, and now all of a sudden I'm being told there's a three family, and if the things were done without the benefit of permits, but it license, looks like an license old folks or anything to that fashion, yeah. well, they would still have to, if there was any work being done over the years, you still have to have licensed professionals in there. So I don't know if there's any fire, life safety issues in there. Um, or anything to that fashion. I don't know what's been done when. You know, it, you know, there could be five units in there. I, I'm not saying there is. I'm just saying. You, you have know, no, you have no records. I have no idea what's in there. And as far as my record tells me, I have a two-family. And I and then. Well, there was a permit for a roof that you submitted, right? There was a permit for a roof for the garage. Yeah. That's all. I, I that's all I have in there. But does anything? Do you observe anything there that looks newly constructed? Well, my concern is that what's there now, uh, with, the, with the vehicles that were there, the, with the fuel that was there, and a lot of it has been cleaned up on the outside of it, even though the vehicles are all packed in there. Some are up on the sidewalk from the photos here the other day. Some were yep. parked in front of the house. I still don't know what's in the garage. Um, and then, if you look at one of on the other records that I have yeah. here, a note from the health department. Yeah that goes back to 1992, that talks about, um, and it's still mentioned as 56, 58. There's no mention of a third unit in the, in the structure. And it goes into, if you look at number seven, the stairway to the third floor bedroom, is, you know, the lighting, and then another one where the ceilings were coming down and unfinished and cracked. So, I mean, you know, I'm grateful nothing ever happened, and. My job is to go out there along with the fire department and the health department. But we actually do a walk through these uh, buildings when we see if it's going from a two to a three unit. Mm -hmm. I looked at it as an illegal unit in the sense that I don't have any permits uh, and how it got there or anything else. But he's but, not applying for but a my, family. Yeah, correct, but it's, they're telling me it's there. Oh, okay. So how did it appear? So and I then, understand the violations here. I, I get this, but my question is, if there's been no construction to an existing dwelling, what requirement would there be for him to retroactively change it? I don't know what construction has been there. It was a two and it became a three. 
something had to be done. I don't know. You this yeah, you suspect that. Okay. I don't have anything that tells me anything different. But you don't have anything otherwise either. Other than well, the trucks I, I do. I have something that says it's a two, and then it came to a three, and I don't have anything in the records that were ever permits or anything else. But so I mean, this, all I know you have licensed, year, unlicensed individuals going through yeah. and performing work, and this is uh, some of the things that we're preventing. So we don't have fires. So we don't have other life safety issues, which I hope we don't have anywhere. In, but that's different than zoning, time. though. That's building. That's correct. Okay. It's a lot of moving parts. Correct. Okay. My, my problem is this. Ellen drove by there once. I've driven by there twice in the last two weeks since I got my package. <clears throat> and when I drive through there or, or by there, for lack of other words, I don't see how a church mouse <laughs> okay, can get in between the cars and, and, and that big leaf truck and there's a front end loader and everything else there, okay? My concern is, is there any gasoline store there? What does the fire department have to say about all of this? Has the fire well, department been down there? No, the fire department has not. Okay, I mean, not I that I know of. I, not that there. I know of at this point. I can't speak for the fire department. I, I mean, you don't think you should call the fire department down there? And see well, I do need to get a hold of the fire department. I'd like to get a hold of, and make, it a, make an arrangement so that the fire department, health department, and the building department, myself, could take a walk through so we can clarify some of those life safety issues on that part of it. But as far as the zoning part, I look at it as an illegal unit until it shows me otherwise where I can have there, because I know the other, the first two. I'm not even concerned about conform. something that happened 25, 30 years ago with all this building stuff. I'm concerned about the plows that are there now. Okay, okay yes. I'm concerned about the, the implowing for the town, coming back at 2 o'clock in the morning, done plowing, and all these trucks line up, and they drop their plows, and they disturb the whole neighborhood. Okay, I think that's the crux of the matter, okay? Okay, there's all these plows dropping trucks, guys getting out of things, saying they're tired, where are you going to go for coffee? And at 2 o'clock in the morning, the con you know, a normal conversation is loud. Okay, I'm, I mean, I see all, all of these vehicles. She counted seven. I didn't, you know, I, there was like 10, 12 vehicles there. Right? I mean, it's a... a Contractors, yeah, to say the very least. Does a contractor's job yeah, belong in that neighborhood? Actually, in the general general business zone, a contractor's job right. would be an allowed uh, use. Right. It's allowed use. Mm -hmm. But there's also other provisions when a contractor's job yeah, is in the use. So let me satisfy the fire department and all the other codes and see if it's a applied use. Okay. I, somehow I can't believe all those I'm, vehicles I'm looking sure, sure on that one lot satisfied all the part. fire and building yeah, codes. So it, I mean, so to your credit, mm -hmm. I think. I mean, you know, you're not finding anybody. You're simply saying, you I, work with us in terms of. What yeah, you're as, as I stated at the first meeting, is my intent is not to bring a fine. Yeah. It might, I, I, I put down the fine and everything else as part of the process, and for me, that gets the attention, so I can at least get the individuals to come in, sure. so we can have a conversation, a civil conversation, and talk about. All right, we have a, a situation that may not be the best, or it could be worse, or somehow. Where do we go from here to make it better? How do we make it right? Can I ask a quick and question? Now, a cease and desist, this would be the final stage. I mean, I don't think we're quite here yet, isn't it? Don't you need to do a little more than a cease and desist? Or was a cease and desist put in place in order to get the attention? The uh, cease and desist stops what's there. Correct. So that way, until we get everything legal, then and, and, uh, with the My safety is issues. Step or would this be the last step in the process? Wouldn't you kind of want to work a little more before you did work a little more with the applicant, with the, you know, the fire department, the safety and the health of and the well-being of the whole neighborhood and the applicant as well before you did the cease and desist? Well, in some situations, I agree. I would approach it that way. On this one here, I did not. Reason being, is the safety issues. I have some concerns. So if they're running a business while we're trying to work things out and something happens okay. on a safety issue, that's a risk that I'm not willing to take. Okay. Um, not even in a unless limited, we can clear it up, then if it, if it doesn't become that, then maybe we can clear that up sooner. I mean, were they here, out. were they here at this hearing? Yeah, if, were they here already? My question is, is there a way to give some kind of limited, um, you know, livelihood stability while the board is 
in the if context we can, of their findings. Yes, if the, we can make the time so I can get with the fire department, the health department, myself, we could do a walk through the property, and then to make to relieve any of the concerns and the safety issues, then I have no problem on taking that out of there and let them, you know, let, letting the gentleman run his business. At least this way here, we can work something out and. Because you know, the, the life safety be issues, I'm not, I, you know, I honestly don't know, so I don't want to speak out of turn. But I mean, some of those, some of those issues as it relates to, to life safety and building code might be beyond our purview. It may not be. I, I, I want to, I need to look into that a little bit more. I'm thinking that right now we're a little bit more on the zoning side and a little bit less on the life safety side. That that's, but that is part of the, but the appeal is the appeal. So I yes. have to digest all of that. Okay. You know, I understand where you come from, the life, on the zoning part of it. Yeah. And I, I have to look at sure. the life safety issues the same way as the public safety with the, as the fire department sure. does. Sure. That's the main, one of the main reasons why I do what I do. Right. Um, that being said, uh, I, I need to clarify some of the zoning issues as well. So if we could clarify those, but I would like to do a walkthrough with the fire department and the health department to feel assured that any, if there are any of the safety issues from what there, that they can satisfy those to be cleared up before you open up a business and then run it. Yeah. So that way, the last thing I would like, again, the last thing I would want to see is running a business and having some of the safety issues and something get triggered. And if it's a chance in a million, it's not a chance I would like to take. It's, yeah, of course. It's a, it's not a chance I would like to take with anybody here on the board or anybody in the municipality in itself. Yeah, we understand. Yeah, but I'm more than w willing to work, you know, with the owner and his attorney to do so, get there as quick as we can. Yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard spot to be in. Did you, did you, okay. did you want to talk? Um, I guess I think you answered some of it, but I was, I was just going to ask for more explicit, maybe a little more explicit clarity if there if it's possible in regards to separating the life safety building code issues from the kind of cease and desist business aspect or if I mean I understand that your point is a mixed use and you have to look at it that way but I guess I'm just looking for some mediation some way to kind of yeah. have a mediation with the with the oh. property owner to as it's been kind of mentioned, like, yes. you know, at what point do you do you start working with them and rein in well, the, the season? Um, they, you know, to be fair, Mr. McAfee and uh, Mr. Cohen, they have been working with, they did get the vehicles off, they have cleaned up in the front and some of the odds and stuff like that. Unfortunately, there's so much of the vehicles and everything and packing them in there, and if you have the fuels and other stuff that's there as well, I mean, that's something that, the fire department, myself, and the health department would have to go down to look at in that part. I mean, clearly, um, this park. But they have been cooperating much. and they have been working with, you know, as far as, you know, doing the due diligence in that part yeah. and making the effort. So yeah. can credit for that as well. But there are some issues that we still need to take care of. I guess my my gut my gut reaction here on on some of the requests that have been made in terms of the plot plan, building plans. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm missing something else, but floor. Floor, building floor plans, same thing, I guess. Um, I guess, in, in my opinion, I guess I, I would feel um, that we, we as a board would probably want to also see a plot plan showing parking. Um, however, I would, I would just suggest that the building plan is is not something really under our purview because uh, it's, so well, it's maybe it might be under yours. If I can interrupt for one yeah. moment. The plot plan would need to be done by a registered land surveyor. Yeah. The building plans and the floor plans, they, they don't have to be. They can be done on graph paper as long as they have something to scale, just give me a rough layout, label, what's what and all that stuff. That would satisfy that requirement. Is that makes it easier for what you're asking? Yeah, or? I think that's yeah, I, 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 fine. I've yeah. mentioned that in the past and I have no yeah. problem. That would be a, a, a you know very reasonable and it's logical. To do it. The intent is not to put the burden, the intent is to alleviate any safety issues and yeah. well, they could well, they correct could the zoning issues. If they wanted to, I mean, I think the question for us is really more threshold issues at this point in the context of, you know, I don't need, and I'll be very candid, I don't know if I'm prepared 
to render my own decision tonight. There's a I, I have to understand the code a little bit better and separate the issues in my own mind. You know, just one member here. But I mean, I think the threshold issues really are, you know, is the use allowed? You know, we have to answer before we would make any requirements on an applicant to do anything. We would simply answer the context of the, the findings that are requested. And I think that's all that's really asked of us because there's no petition to do anything. If we, you know, if, 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 the, if the appeal fails or in part or in whole, then, you know, the, then, then the applicant's remedy is to go back to the building inspector and give him what he wants or take up another appeal. You know, so I, I want to be a little bit more clear on the legal issues, which is why I'm, I don't think I'm frankly prepared to, uh, <coughs> to vote on anything tonight myself. I don't know about you guys. One of my concerns is not saying that I'd be prepared to vote if I were to vote on it, but I think one of the issues kind of becomes the fact of the cease and desist. I think that understanding that the board's not prepared to vote on it and wanting more information and looking into things. I think we do have to take into consideration that somebody's livelihood and ability to work and make a living and pay their taxes in the town of North Andover is being limited. And I understand that your time is valuable and you probably have a full schedule, but I kind of feel this is something that should be put on the top of the priority list if and, it's something that's going to be and held. I can agree with you that just because I have a busy schedule doesn't mean that someone has to be at hold trying to make things right. And I'm more than more than willing to sit down and work out how we can resolve this as soon as we can. I have no problem with that at all. I mean, clearly there's room for parking. The question is how much, you know, in the context of how it's being used. You know, there are those bays. Are you using them the best way? I don't know. It looks like there could be parking as well. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of issues there. In terms of the other issues, you know, the records that either exist or don't exist, I don't know, you have a pre-existing use. So that's a whole other issue. And then the life safety issues are separate from that. So there's just so many things that we have to consider here. You know, it would be, I think in the interim, it would be helpful if there could be some kind of way that the gentleman could operate, you know, at least in a limited fashion until the board renders a decision to but that's that's not our call, I guess. That's your call. I'd be willing to sit down and we can discuss and see how we can come to some kind of resolve. I'll work. I'll work. To, I'll work with you as far as to get there as quick as we can, knowing that you know we do have some restraints to take care of some of the other issues too. It's a two-way street. I have no problems. So, so you would this a two-way street. Would we continue this until your next meeting? I would give you a chance to think about the issues. In the meantime, I could talk to the building inspector about getting some type of limited temporary uh, permission to operate at, at the site. The building inspector is within their authority at any point in time to give you any relief that he sees fit. I mean, you've, that, you've appealed the totality the of what's happened. That's so you have a right to be here. So he, he's well within his authority to sit down with you anytime he wants. There's just so many moving parts for us you know, because of the likelihood that we render a decision that one side likes and the other side doesn't like, it's always likely there could be another appeal of what we do. So we have to understand kind of where we are. And I understand there's a neighborhood factor too, and I don't want to give, I don't want to tell the neighbors who have been sitting here so patiently um, that they, they can certainly be heard if they want to, but that's just in terms of, I'd like to collect all the information we can tonight, and then I think we'd have to continue it to May. Um, it's just, it's just too much. Can we hear from abutters? Yeah. Is there any abutters that want to be heard? Well, thank you for your time. I do I appreciate it. I have a couple it. questions. Are you an abut? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mr. Belanger, thank you so much. <coughs> for, for, for thank you, Smith. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Church Street's two ways. Right? You're going to have to come up to the podium and say your name and address for the record. Kevin Robinson, you might take it off your hat, please. <laughs> yeah. Kevin Robinson, uh, 57 Water Street. Um, Church Street, it's a two-way street, okay, and what deems a duplex general business? Is that, is that grandfathered in, that he ran the business that long? That the zoning district, the zoning district, where it falls within the zoning map, 
So Mr. Belanger can probably answer that question. So better. is that part of the, is Church Street part of the business overlay uh, district? Yeah, I can sit Sure. Yeah. The, yes, it is. Uh, that property is actually in a general business zone, and those are allowed uses within the general business okay. zone in the business. Zone. Okay, and it's a two-way street. It is. Okay. That's correct. Thank you. Is it? Yes, yes. I think that, it is well, too. Well, if it wasn't, then I went down. Then <laughs> I think I've driven. <laughs> I think I've driven both ways on Church Street. So, yeah. So there's a lot. I mean, I I understand. I understand everything that's going on. So we have to deal with it. What do you think? Um, I, I I agree. There's a lot to a lot um, going on. Uh, what I would ask. Uh, somehow, Attorney Caprice, if we could find a piece of paper, because that's the language that I speak. I'm an attorney sitting like yourself, and so is Mr. Chair. Um, I use papers, the term paper <laughs> speaks volumes to me. So, to the extent that we can find a piece of paper from 1976 or pre zoning that says that the land, landscaping was there, maybe there's a, a, a canceled check, just give me something to hang on to that says the landscaping business was there. I can give you a testimony of people who know it was there. I have people in the audience who tell you that that business was there. And on the record, that's equally valuable. So to, to the extent that that can be arranged, that'd be great. The other, again, in the, in the piece of paper world that I live in, and that the language that you speak, I love to find some kind of resolution for this two fam, three fam kind of thing, because residential is an allowed use in the, or is not an allowed use in the GB. It's allowed by in the in the language of the code itself. But there's a difference between single family, two family, and three family. And I'd love to find Again, something to hang my hat on, please. Understood. Understood. I'll, I'll take a look. Thank you. <coughs> so with that, I mean, if you would to know about this for tonight, we have the letters in the record that you submitted. Is there anybody that wants to say anything tonight or not? No pressure. Okay. I will. I will. Okay. My name is Laurie Giacunta, and I'm from North Andover. Hi. And um, I've known Teddy probably, I don't know, 40 years or more. And I've known he, he's had his business for at least 40 years. Um, my oldest son worked for him, and my youngest son works for him now, so he doesn't have a job now. So, but I just wanted to say that, you know, Teddy's a great guy, he's been a family friend to my family, and I don't know. That's all I have to say, but. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Uh, we've known Teddy for at least 35 years, and I remember that he's had that business since we were, we were younger. You know, he's had it that, that long, that business. And the other thing is, he does a lot of stuff for those people in that neighborhood. He'll plow their driveways, he'll get his bobcat out and dig them out just to help those people out. And I mean, and now they're not appreciating what he's done for them in the past. And every time they've asked him to do something to help him out, he's never said no. Sure. He's always right there to do it, you know? I just want to say that because uh, well, he is, he's an excellent guy, you know? He, he's a very good resident of the town of North Andover. Sure. And he's been a long time resident of town of North Andover. And he's very well known and he's very well appreciated too. You know. Okay, thank you. Thank Can we you. get your name and address for the record, please, sir? Uh, my name's David Coakley, and I live right here at uh, 6 McCabe Court. Okay. Thank you. In, in, in our record does not reflect a named complainant, so. Okay. We don't have a named complainant. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Water's fine. Okay. Now this is a this is a forum just to remind everyone just to this is your neighborhood this is your voice yep. that you know, people need to understand this is your time to speak for your neighborhood what you want what you don't you know <coughs> that's why it's here it's a public forum for everyone to speak up for for things but we, we also understand why people speak or don't speak too I mean we we get it <laughs> we get it you know hi hey, Gary Rogers uh, 59 Church Street I live right across the street from Ted. Ted's been a friend of mine for years. That friendship's being tested right now because I couldn't side with his petition. Um, I actually plow for him. I'm a retired carpenter, and I do plow. I get in those plows, and I plow for the town. 
So it, it's kind of difficult for me to say this because he, he's been a friend, but I have some concerns that kind of went on deaf ears, and I know he's, he's been in business for years, but recently I've seen the, the yard get cleaned up, and I spoke with Teddy, and I said, I'm thrilled with what's happened with your yard, and my main concern is that it doesn't go back to the way it was. That's, that's my first concern. As a taxpayer, my property value is, is affected, and the quality of my neighborhood. Sure. And a, a couple other concerns are along the lines of the noise. It's a noisy business, and the hours that... So I'd, I'd like to see some restrictions placed on that. Not that I don't want to see him go out of business. I want him to continue in business. But this is a time where I think some changes could be made for the neighborhood. We are a residential neighborhood. He is a business in, on that side. But I, I just have some reasonable concerns about the hours of the business. Sure. And that's Are all. you still working for him? Um, yeah. I did plow the last storm. Not tonight. <laughs> Not tonight. <laughs> but, no. um, but I think they're, re the I think they're reasonable concerns. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know if you can address those. I'd like to see you give him his permit back. But if there can be some kind of restrictions, because it's a quiet residential neighborhood except for that that noisy business when trucks pull in when he starts up two cycle engines to be yeah. tested I don't know if we have when he authority. sharpens his blades at I, nine at night yeah. in the I'll summertime be, I'll be honest with you I, I don't know the answer to that question I appreciate you coming and yeah. talking I really do and I'm an immediate like yeah. other people don't live right around it but I, I'm right across the street and a couple people beside him we're affected the most. Sure. I, I think our town does have standard on, standards yeah. on when to operate, uh, hours of operation. Um, there are some standards. In yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't have them exactly in front of me. I, if, I think it's 7 o'clock. You can start. 8.30, you can draw. You know, yeah, there's some really specific standards. But I don't know how they relate to contractors, yards, and yes. the GB zone. Yeah. So the, well, that's something we can But again, I don't want Teddy to lose his business, but yeah. I feel like this is a forum I can... You know, it went on deaf ears. I did speak to Teddy privately, but okay. it, it didn't seem to be con a concern. But a, that is a concern of mine, okay. and I think it's a reasonable concern. Okay. And, and I Thank think you. when you're dealing with, yeah. um, you know, the applicant and everyone around, you can just look into the, the you know, the operation. Oh, most and the definitely. Noise. Yeah. The, um, I like to be proactive, but it's a two-way street. I'll work with, I'll work with, the main, the main object at the end of the day is, we get things so we're all in a comfortable place, things are right, so the neighborhood's good. Yeah. The life safety issues and all that are taken care of as well. And I want to be so clear, too. On, and then the hours of limitation, yep. those would be known, so of operation and all that stuff. And you'd be more than happy to call the billing department, and I'll get you the exact hours okay. and those. I just don't have it in front of me. to. And again, I'm a, I'm a very much person that live and let live. You know, I don't, I don't like to get involved in anyone's business unless it affects me negatively, and I think it... It's like most people, I think, on that yeah. part, but yes. So thank no, you. That's understandable. Right. Thank you. Mr. Right. Mr. Chair, if I may, just as, as a point of education, because there's no better way um, to get information out than when you have everybody's attention, and it's worth probably sharing with the, the gallery and the, the, you know, the, the throngs who are riveted to their television watching at home, but the, the, the GB district has a you know, a series of much more intense uses allowed as of right than a mere contractor's yard. And this is in no way suggesting, as uh, uh, the building inspector is going to look into, and as Attorney Caffrey has, has indicated and others have mentioned, um, that there are certainly hours of operation and there are noise standards and all those kind of things. But the table of uses is very specific and allowed, um, sur surprisingly perhaps, because I don't look in the GB district all that often, but auto service stations are allowed as of right. An auto vehicle repair and body shop is allowed as of right. A bus garage is allowed as of right. I mean, there are just so many other more intense uses than a contractor's yard. Admittedly, there are vehicles coming in and out, and certainly during plow season, I'm sure certain that um, there are some challenging hours uh, for, the, for the neighborhood as well as the, the folks who are actually doing the plowing. So my, my message is only that um, as of right, there are lots of other more intense uses in this uh, plot of land than the, than the contractor's yard. Yeah, certainly. And 
unless there are any more comments, Mr. Chair, it's not my intention to be labor. I'm happy to happy to make a motion to continue to May 9th, I heard. Yes. May, May 9th. Motion to continue to May 9th, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? I'll second. Is that agreeable, Mr. Caffrey? That's agreeable. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we stand continue. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me. Next on our agenda is a new public hearing from Mr. Stanley, 58 uh, Country Club Circle, who is seeking to put a ground pool in the R1 district, right? Perhaps in the watershed? Hi. Oh, okay, hold on a sec. Let us get the hearing open for you. I'm um, still trying to where is it? put away the old one. Where did I put it? Is it? Stanley, we're on to Stanley. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing at Town Hall, 120 Main Street, North Andover, Massachusetts, on Tuesday, April 11, 2017, at 7.30 p.m. to all parties interested in the petition for Donald Stanley for property located at 58 Country Club Circle, Map 064.0, Parcel 0150, North Andover, Massachusetts, 01845. The applicant is requesting a variance pursuant to section 4.136.3.C.Romanet point 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 2.3 for construction of an in-ground pool in the R1 zoning district. A variance is requested under section 4.136, the Watershed Protection Division, three uses in building requirements, uh, C Romanet 2, 3, non-disturbance buffer zone of the zoning bylaws. Application and supporting materials are available for review at the office of the zoning department located at 120 Main Street, North Andover, Massachusetts, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from the hours 8 to 4, Tuesday from the hours of 8 to 5.30, Friday from 8 to 11.30. And it doesn't say it, but it is by order of the chair, really? Albert P. Manzi III, Esquire. Okay. Well, let's hope it's not a procedural defect. <laughs> All right, great. So, uh, so before you go, I'm actually not going to sit on this for reasons I think you know I, my, with my dad. So um, Alex, Alex, you can take over, and I'm just going to okay, so we'll drop the mic and leave. No, time ago, <laughs> it was, but he's still he's still sold to the property. So. And I don't work there anymore. I'm retired. Okay. But you live there. <laughs> I live in Beverly. All right, so Ms. McIntyre is recused. We'll let the record reflect Ms. Jacobs. Uh, so we'll be sitting in for her. So that still would be a five person? Yes. You need four. You need four. Okay. And so, uh, okay, so welcome. Good evening. I'm George Zamboris. I'm the engineer uh, of the project. I work with Atlantic Engineering and Survey Consultants. And I'm representing Mr. Stanley. And uh, as reading in the article, <laughs> in the notice, um, there. What Mr. Stanley is proposing to do is to install, uh, what he'd like to do is install permanent structures inside the non-disturbed zone of the watershed district, specifically a pool, a retaining wall in the fence enclosure, which requires a variance and a special permit. Uh, we Who gives are, you the special permit? Pardon me? Who gives you the special permit? The special permit is to the planning board. From the planning board? Yes. The variance is from us? The variance is from you. Okay. And actually the way the regulations read, uh, we're supposed to receive the variance before we can actually apply for the special permit. Uh, however, we have, we, you know, we did do the filing uh, and since the planning board was looking for a little bit more information, uh, that wasn't quite ready in time for their previous meeting. We uh, continued the meeting last meeting till next week, which will be after your, uh, after your meeting. Plus, at the same time, I think since the meetings were to be so close together, uh, the intention of the planning board was actually to continue theirs until they heard the results of yours. So they let you file it? They did let us file it. But they're it. not going to make a decision unless but we they're approve it? they're not going to decide until after the results of uh, this hearing. Interesting. Okay. Sure. Uh, they, they indicated what they have done in the past, and maybe I misunderstood what they said, is that um, they conditioned their, a, they conditioned a decision subject to the results of the variance. Right. But we do need both. We need the variance and special permit. So was there a, was there a variance granted on this property there previously? Was, there was. I mean, uh, this is the existing conditions plan. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, there's a lot of lines on here. What puts us in the the uh, the no disturb zone? It's, it's not that we're so close to the lake, but we're close to the bordering vegetated wetland, which is tributary to the lake. Uh, this is the edge of the wetland here. The 150 foot distant distance is right here. So from this line back <coughs> is the uh, do not disturb zone. What was uh, granted back in 2006 or actually I think 2006 there was a minor modification to it. So I believe it was, it was uh, maybe the, uh, a year or two before 2006 was for the garage, which is this, this structure right here. Um, but this is the existing uh, dwelling. Uh, like I said, the entire site's with, within the watershed district. It's the rear portion that's in the do not disturb zone. The limit of fill activity on the entire property right now is this dash line. Uh, everything from here, the, uh, that direction, has been previously disturbed. Uh, a lot of which from when the uh, house was originally built. Uh, the subdivision was approved in 1998. And tied into the uh, sewer system on, in the year 2000, so. They probably told them in 98 you can't build the pool because it's in the no-disturbance zone. No, it wasn't. Uh, that's when the entire subdivision was built. I'm being funny. No. <laughs> 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 yeah. Anyways. I remember when the subdivision went in. So what's driving the need to for the variance to have to put the pool well, there? It, as, you know, as you're aware, it's a weird shake lot. It's a two-acre lot. This portion of the lot is three-quarters of an acre. Uh, the grade in around the house is elevation 190 to 192. The elevation down here goes down to 166. Uh, so, uh, so between the wetlands doesn't continue there. The wetlands actually rounds back here, but due to the you know the narrowness and the uh, at least the topography, you know, 20 22 feet deeper than uh, at a lower elevation the way your living facilities is. There's a lot of structures that would have to be installed, which are almost unapprovable just to get down there. So I mean, this part of the lot is, I wouldn't say useless, but I mean, I mean, as far as constructing anything and usability other than a uh, natural state, uh, that's about where uh, that's the only thing you'd be allowed to do. Uh, there is ledge out crops in the front. The soils in the area, uh, they're, they're classified as Chatfield hollow, soil, uh, hollow soils. Uh, those soils, um, they're sands to loomy sands with uh, shallow bedrock. Um, obviously, you have a ledge outcrop here. Uh, right in this vicinity here is elevation 192. That's the same elevation uh, what it was prior to the subdivision being built. So what's suspected is that this, this ledge that's exposed here is probably uh, in this area also. Um, Clearly, you wouldn't put the pool in the front of the house, right? And you can't put the pool so, in the front of the house. But and the grade differential from the, the house to the rear line is 12 foot difference in elevation. So, in order to put the pool any place in here, you have to build a wall too. So the, you get you get to being the pool and the wall, yeah. and also you, there's one point of the wall that's going to be slightly over five feet, about five and a half feet. So you're going to need a fence on top of the wall, plus you need the fence around the, uh, for the uh, requirement for the uh, construction of the pool. So how far away are you from the tributary? Um, this, is, this, is the one, this is the wetland area here. This line here is the 150-foot line. So the, That's the a no disturb line. disturb is from 75 feet to 150 feet. Yeah. And this area, this blue and red area is the pool. It's only this red area of the pool that's actually in the do not disturb zone. Uh, and the wall is along this area here and along back here. So I mean, all, all of this portion of the wall and the portion of the fence that goes along the section would be in the do not disturb zone. So have they made you evaluate the stormwater calculations through Lisa Eggleston? Uh, we, we did do that. Um, we are proposing a rain garden here and a rain garden here to uh, to capture the runoff from the uh, from the added impervious we're doing. Uh, Lisa Eggleston that's doing the review for planning, she wants to uh, 
she's not comfortable that the grading is going to work out that great. So what we are going to do, which she hasn't seen yet, mainly because they, the planning department asked us for a landscape plan, and mm -hmm. I'm finally supposed to get it by tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, we are going to be adding uh, some infiltration trenches along the patio here, here, and here, tied to subsurface, and give her the calculation showing her that we're, we're, we're infiltrating way more than what's required uh, for the volume. But that's a, big, that's a big deal. Because yes. of your proximity well, to right, the tributary, right now we're meet, we're what right now the way we're proposed it is that the uh, runoff coming off the site after we're done is equal to or slightly better than what it is right now. But and are uh, her findings in? Did she did she render her findings yet? Uh, there was a. Uh, and do we have them? Uh, Lisa Agatha. Yeah. Um, she had an initial comment that was by letter, a second one by email. Uh, she has not, I have not responded to the final one yet because part of that's tied into the landscape plan. Yep. So uh, her final one, you won't, uh, sh the planning board will not see until um, probably see, Thursday. See, I, so I'm only one person. I'll just get right to the heart of the matter. I think that as it relates to the stormwater runoff, it, it's the basis for the variance. It's the mm -hmm. whole basis for the waiver. Right. And, you know, I'm inclined, if Lisa, if I get Lisa Eggleston's findings in our record and the planning board accepts them, I have a much higher comfort level than shooting from my hip without mm -hmm. knowing what those findings are going to be. So that, that's something that I personally would be looking for. Um, because I don't want to, I don't, I'm not inclined to waive a variance as it relates to the lake without knowing what the stormwater findings mm -hmm. are. Because she, uh, she's the peer reviewer, you know. Well, that's understandable. But you might have four here that says it's okay. Yeah, I'm just telling you what I'm looking for. The reason why Ellen left, because in my other life, that's what I did. I wrote these regulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, I think, it's pro I think it's probably doable, but I like to have those in the record, and I like to see them because well, she's I, the expert. I have uh, no problem if you, um, you know, want to hear anything else the uh, board may want, then we can continue but it. These guys may not agree, so, you know. Okay. You have to see where, you, where everybody falls on that. No, I understand what you're saying. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Because, quote, we are the conservation board now, right? Well, I mean, the bylaw is in place, so they're asking for yeah, a, I understand. A, a waiver. So, yeah, yeah I mean, you got to... Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I just don't feel as though I'm doing my diligence. And we'll go to the conservation officer for her, okay? I think so, because they're going to handle what we're doing, right? They're going to yeah. handle the, the whole stormwater. Yeah. We'll be back. We'll be back before the planning board next the next mm -hmm. meeting next week. Yeah. So then, by then, uh, uh, they should have Lisa should have her final comments based on what I'm going to submit to her tomorrow afternoon. So that's enough time, I think, for us to have be able to render a decision for our May meeting if we have all those comments in the record. You know, I frankly think. Okay. You know. One question: Why couldn't he move the pool a little bit closer to the house? So you take well, the red out have, of. They have an existing patio here. Yep. Um, and you know, they are they are expanding it a little bit, and they're putting a little small kitchen area here, and even putting it. Oh, right. so you could. Putting it in far further, I mean, you, there's, there's, a set, there's a great differential from here to there. But if push came to shove, you could push the pool out of that little bit of red out of that zone there, correct? I think, I think if push came to shove, what may try to do is, as long as the, the board would be... Uh, That's even better. ...would be comfortable with us allowing some of the, the retaining well to be in the do not disturb, I mean, the do not disturb zone. Because to get it, to get the entire pool and wall out of the do not disturb, we have to kick away into here, which is just not feasible. We know we're, For the we know pool we're and the wall. The ledge, but if the wall could stay here, the pool could kick that way a little bit to get, you know. But when the house was constructed, these constraints were in place, so they, you know, this isn't anything new in terms of, so it's not like you're creating your own hardship. You know, you kind of like, we want to put the pool here because it fits the best, but you could move it and make it yeah, more it, conformal. It's possible they may run into a ledge. You don't know? Yeah, but you don't know if you're going to run into a ledge or not. Oh, this is filled. Oh, okay. We have, we have proof from the existing okay. topography from the site to what this is now. We know, we know this whole area is filled. We know that if we go this way, 
with ledge being here, and this is we know that that's going to be ledge there too. How deep you know we yeah, run into it, we don't know. So, all right. In a better case scenario, you can push the pool closer to the house and leave the retaining wall where it is. If you had to. Um. Probably do a little bit of both. You can prop, so, so that that would be doable, and you wouldn't need a variance from us. I'd still need the variance for the wall and the fence, because the wall based and the on fence, based, but not the pool. Right. But not the pool, right? Mm -hmm. Because the way the definition of a permanent structure, which is which is identified in Do Not Disturb, it includes pools, walls, and fences. And Lisa's going to give us the answer, right? Yeah. So the question mm -hmm. would be. Which plan is she evaluating? Mm -hmm. um, she's going to evaluate a plan like this, but with more infiltration, with more infiltration than what she's seeing right now. Yeah. So whatever that final version is, we would want her results. If it's if it's moved over, as Alan suggested, which is a great great idea, mm -hmm. because it's it's much less of an impact. Intrusive, right? Yeah. It's much less intrusive. I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so because of the runoff. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I, if all the runoff is being collected, but you know yeah. the chemicals and so forth, I mean that's that's kind of the. Mm -hmm. I think that's why it was the lines of demarcation were made in the first place. Right. Okay. Make a motion to continue. Well, we'll, we'll, is that we'll, we're at? well, I don't know if there's anybody else that wants to be heard on this mm -hmm. one. Nobody here on this. Probably the only question that I would ask, just so that it's, just so that it's said on the record for us, is can you do, so, so we're talking about building in a non-disturbed zone. So can you tell us what it means to, what a non-disturbed zone means? So what, what are we actually regulating here? What the, are we addressing? The, the non, in the non-disturbed zone, uh, well, one thing, in the general watershed protect, protection district, all the underlying uses of, are allowed. Uh, this pool, this wall, any place else in this lot is allowed by right. Get a building permit. We don't need a special permit. Would need, wouldn't have to come for variance. Um, but in the non-disturbed zone, any permanent structures require a special permanent permit and a variance. Uh, I forget all the other definitions in there, but as far what pertains to this is a, uh, a permanent structure requires a variance and a special permit. And, and you wrote the regs, so why? You know, why, why do we care about this well, non-disturbed zone? You're, well, I didn't write this reg. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote right. someone else's regs. Okay. But, you know, you, you know, the, the intent of, uh, you know, the intent of Watership uh, Protection District is you want to, uh, you want to try to encourage natural uh, features uh, and, you, and, you, and you don't want um, urbanized and pervious areas to uh, pollute your runoff, and you want to try to recharge, and you want to uh, maintain your groundwater, and obviously, and everything, and, and keep everything clean to keep your water supply clean. And that's why the very first thing that uh, you see in any watershed protection uh, protection district is, you know, the typically what uh, is is gas stations, underground fuel, uh, underground fuel uh, storage, and everything are are completely not allowed. I mean, you can't get you can't get them; they're just out. So but it's just there to protect the water, the surface water and the groundwater supply. And so the more natural features you can maintain, you, you, you can afford, uh, that affords you to do that as a community. In, in the alternative, if you can't have the natural features, then you put in artificial features well, such, such as you, the infiltration system I mean, and the rain gardens. You're significantly away from uh, the watershed. I mean, you can't, you can't say you can't build at all in a watershed. So when, um, when you take around the, uh, the, when you take away the natural features, that promote groundwater, then, uh, i.e., impervious areas. Then you want to take capture the runoff from those impervious areas and pump them back into the ground so that you keep your groundwater uh, recharged. And because uh, because part of your uh, water supply, uh, surface water supply, anyways, is from surface waters and groundwaters. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. One more question. How many feet are we talking with that little red area off the pool? That's, you know, two the feet, three feet, feet, four is, feet. This is a 20 scale, so the maximum point is probably 15 feet. That's why I say it, it would probably go in and over a little bit. 
So, so in the largest portion is about yeah, 15 it's, feet? It's, it's 21.8 percent of the pool. It's a very small area. Potentially less than. Pardon me? Potentially less if, if it gets mm -hmm. moved a little bit. Yeah. No, it's not the deck, it's just the pool because you don't need the permit for the deck. You only need the permit for the pool. Mm -hmm. All right, because it's deemed a structure. Correct. You don't you don't need a you don't need a building permit for the deck, you only need a building permit for the pool. Sure. All right, well I mean I think that would be the way to go in terms of uh, Okay. Should we hear from any of ours? I don't think there's anyone here on this. Right, they all, they all said no. They're, they're, on the next one. they're on the next one. Then motion to continue to May 9th, Mr. Chair. Second the motion. Okay, second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Uh, aye. Okay, that stands continued. And we look forward. You can file that additional yes. information. To I'll, submit, uh, I'll submit what I have as of right now, and once I receive a final comments from our final submission, I'll follow that. Actually, I'll do it as a package. Just wait here. It's not peace spiel. You'll have all three comments from her all well in time before your next meeting. That'd be helpful. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming and waiting. All right. All right. Um, next on the next matter on the agenda is, yes, the matter of Harold Trombley III. So uh, I am going to recuse from this hearing. I'm not going to sit on this. I think Ms. McIntyre will be back in in a second, okay? You can just note that on the record. So, Mr. Koch, I think you'll be chairing this Thank meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Glad you, could, glad you could join us. You know he's just leaving early. Yeah. Yeah. I can't be clear this What? You were outvoted. I feel cold coming on from London from May. She's got one. Since Mr. Chair handed me the gavel, unfortunately, someone else is going to need to read the notice. Who is going to be the acting clerk, Madam Vice Chair? I think wants to. You want to read it? Someone else can read it. I can't see it. You want to read it? Yeah, I got to read it. Oh, okay, go ahead. Notice is, notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing at Town Hall located at 120 Main Street, North Andover, Massachusetts on Tuesday, April 11th, 2017 at 7.30 to all parties interested in the petition of Harold Trombley III for property address 76 Colgate Drive, North Andover, Massachusetts, um, map 081.0, parcel 0022, North Andover, Massachusetts in the R4 zoning district. The petitioner is requesting a special permit from 4.122.22 of the zoning bylaw family suite in the R4 zoning district is required from the zoning board of appeals and a variance from section 2.37.1 of the zoning bylaw states the size of the family suite is not to exceed 1200 square feet or not more than 25% of the gross floor area of the principal unit, whichever is lesser, the applicant's plan exceeds 25% gross floor area of the principal structure by 496 square feet and is looking for a variance for the additional square footage. Application and supporting materials are available for review at the town at the office of the zoning department located at 120 Main Street, North Andover, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday from the hours of 8 to 4, Tuesday from 8 to 5.30, Friday, 8 to 11.30. By order of the Board of Appeals, Albert Manzi, the third Esquire Chairman. Okay. Hi. How you doing? Could you just state your name and address for the record, please? Yep, yeah, Harold W. Trumbull, the third, 76 Colgate Drive. Terrific. Welcome. 
And we have two things on the docket. As Doug read, we've got a special special permit for the use and then a variance for the uh, square footage of the um, project. Uh, my suggestion, I think, is to talk about the special permit to, to, uh, to the, the use itself first as a family suite. So if you could give yeah. us a little background, what you yeah. what you're looking for. What we're trying to do is um, add a family suite, uh, but as you saw, it's you're allowed 25%, so we need the extra square footage for my in-laws um, to move in with us on, on that uh, part of land. Is and, uh, this the addition here? Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing that the existing family room is what's yeah. there, yeah. but then the rest of this is all what you're looking to do. Right, but there's a, there, there's other pages that show our house that's on there if you rotate it to go through. I, I think the problem is presenting it as opposed to what you want is not clearly defined. Oh, okay. well, I think it's very clear. You can? I think it's defined. I just think it's a lot. I think it's very clearly defined. I have to happen to agree with my colleague back there. It's a lot. Okay. But let the man finish his speech. And okay. So, continue. yeah, what we're trying to do mm -hmm. is um, make it so in the neighborhood, it's we don't want to go higher with it or lower, just one, and also an open concept. Uh, reason for the open concept is uh, my father-in-law is 100% um, disabled for, through the vets and so we're, we're thinking down the road we're thinking 10 15 20 years down the road when he has to go into a wheelchair we want it to be open we want the doorways to be wider we want the uh, the main bathroom for them just so they can like if he was in a wheelchair I'm not saying he is right now but when he goes into a wheelchair they can go right into the shower in that um, so we're not trying to change something later on we're not trying to you know, spend all this money right now and then down the road spend more money to make it open concept wider for him to be able to get around inside that home. I think it's great that you're planning ahead. I hope never actually you need that. Um, I will just say right off the bat, and I understand that you're looking for the additional square footage, I think this is probably one of the biggest in law suites I have seen. I've only been on the board for a year, so it doesn't necessarily mean well, much. We're not allowed to have the in-law, but the family suite. Well, the family, the family suite. Okay. This, in my opinion, looks really big. Okay. We're, and we did a plot plan, so we showed that we were inside of, of the where we're allowed to so be. So let, let me ask you, what's the size of the existing house? And just to put it into perspective, two thousand. It, it's early 1984. And what's the size of the addition? Almost nine. Thousand. Yeah, just shy of a thousand. Nine hundred ninety-six. That's a fifty. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Just yeah. to be clear, that includes part of a one one stall of the garage. Do in, you have in your proposed figures? The garage is you, you can't count the square footage. No, so it's okay. not. So you have allowed to. two thousand of existing living space in your home and you want to add an additional 1,000 square feet, 50% of living space, of living space to, for an in-law. Yes. Wait a minute. He's looking to him. 50% more space, Correct. roughly 1,000 square feet, and this addition is going to have two bathrooms. This family suite's going to have two bathrooms. Is there a reason? Good God. Okay. Yeah, uh, well, there's, there's two bathrooms. Full, full bath and one half bath, yes. Yeah, okay, okay. And if you look at the property from the street on the elevation shot, yeah. what you really created is a two-family home. Yeah, but you're not allowed to. have. It's not a two-family home. But what happens should something that happen in your lifetime or your father's lifetime or in somebody's lifetime that you people sell the house? Now you've created a second apartment, a thousand foot apartment with two bathrooms. My understanding is that there's two garages, there's a separate garage to go into the property, there's no, separate it, it, entrances. The, I well, mean, the garage is one one garage altogether. Well, not according um, to this, it looks like a, a, a two star garage. Well, it's a two star, but there's no walls in between. So when yeah, you go it went in, very it's easy to install a wall, correct? Yeah, sure, you could install right. anything if you wanted to. Well. Um, but the thing is, is if I understand the, the laws right also, is that if we decide down the road that, I mean, hopefully you guys don't know as much as I do that they're going to pass away right away, that we are going to 
either us move in and as long as we stay with the family as long as you as long as you, you stay in the family so if we decide down the road 20 30 40 years down the road for my wife and I to go to that side and one of my sons to take this side then it just still stays in the family if you decide to then try to or if my sons didn't want to stay we could take out a kitchen and now just have a house that seems like it belongs out country I'm in the real estate business. Yeah. Okay. And on average, houses turn over every seven years. Okay. Okay. You're talking 30 years from now. Let's yeah. go to the average. Or the, things happen in people's lives. Right. Okay. Okay. My, my father died in a car accident. Okay. That was unexpected. Things happen in people's lives that ha have a tendency to change mm -hmm. the way the best laid plans are. Right. What, okay. So, I mean, you're talking 30 years. That's a long time, my friend. Yeah, we're, we're not planning. We we've been here our whole lives. Yeah, our families have been here our whole lives. We're not planning on leaving North Andover, even though North Andover kind of gives a kind of push once in a while. We have a business in town. Mm -hmm. We're trying to stay in town. We want to be part of this town. I mean, I just see a two family, a thousand square foot. Well, no, it's not two families. I know it's not loud in the. Should you sell the property? Should something happen? The town is left with this. Okay. No. That's the way I see. It. This is what the town is left, and that's a beautiful neighborhood. Uh, well, I, I disagree I mean, I don't with you on the that. Neighborhood. I mean, yeah. you, you have a gorgeous house with a big lot. Yep. So I see where you meet all the zoning requirements, but it's really not fair to the neighborhood that, as she said, this large structure be erected there. Well, I, I also, I don't have any. None of the neighbors are coming back at us as of I know right now. I do know I have two neighbors here, um, so I can't speak for them. But I think they're also part of it. All our neighbors are on board with us, that own property, that are right around us. Um, and again, I have two neighbors um, that I, I can't speak for them. I think they're here for us, but I don't. I can't say that if they are or not. This is something I'll say, not to jump in, but just to give you an idea of I think where the board's coming from is we're setting a precedent with what we do or don't do with you. Yep. So if we allow such a large expansion, we're setting that precedent. I think what you're doing is amenable, and I think that's great, especially considering the fact that it's in-laws. But this, the whole purpose more so of the in-law suites is more so that they have their own bedroom, maybe their own sitting area, a bit of a kitchen. This to me looks more like they're ready to entertain in, in their, their suite, where it's more supposed to be a place just for them to, kind of more so for them not for, I mean, a thousand square feet, that's, that's pretty much an apartment and a house for some people. That's not supposed to be the intent of this. So that's why I think the extra square footage you're looking at is, is what's causing that problem. I don't see where this is a place for your in-laws that there is two bathrooms needed. This is meant okay. for them, not, So know. the only thing I've heard so far is the two bathrooms. It's the size in general. I mean, I'm looking at a dining room and a living room, and I kind of sit here and say, if it's for both of them, is, is both of that needed? Because you can you know, make this smaller by more combining those two. Okay. There's a reason why they, why they say 25%. Right. And it's for the intent of having a family suite. Not, for me, this looks like a two family. The intent, when you do it 50% of the house, it absolutely screams to family that the layout, the size, the longness of the house, and taking up almost, <coughs> excuse me, all of the lot. Look at the <coughs> with the width. Right? I mean, here's the elevation shot. It is a two family. Yep. So, a, a lot of times when you see a family suite, it's something hidden in back with a little back entrance. Not this, this looks like this is a two family in my eyes. Okay. I mean, I think. If you rework the dining and living, and of course I'm not saying put them in a shoebox. I don't think that's right either. But that's why we allow 25%, which is still a good chunk of space. 500 square feet you think is good for a family suite? I think you're talking for two people is essentially what you're looking at. I mean, that, that's essentially, the purpose of it is, like I say, it's, it's for them to be able to stay there. And in some cases it reduces the economic cost, the financial cost you know, allowing the daughter, son, whatever, to move into the main property. Um, I've only been on the board for a year, but this is, this is the biggest one I've seen, and I've seen 
multiple ones done for two people that are smaller, yeah. that don't push the, the envelope as wide as you're trying to push it. I mean, it's within your right to come here to ask for the, the variance. I mean, that's apparently why you're here, because you, you're looking for the relief of, which is a lot of relief, which our board tends to be a little more conservative. The, in, the intent of the suit that uh, it was uh, articulating is it's not supposed to be a second house. It's not supposed to be a family second house. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be a family efficiency apartment or a family studio apartment yep. for folks to come and crash and be near the other family members who may or may not be taking care of them, but at least have proximity and an economy of scale. <clears throat> so what the board is reacting to, myself included, just so that my voice is, is heard and you're not misled by my silence, is um, we have a lengthy history of folks using family suites as two family houses, using family suites as income producing apartments, which neither of those two things are within the intent of family suite. I'm not hearing you suggest that you have the intent to have this be an income producing apartment or that it be a second house, but a place for your in-laws to, to live mm -hmm. with you guys. So with that in mind, if we are married in our intentions here, um, then uh, a thousand square foot second, uh, a thousand square foot addition is just grossly beyond anything that I would be even remotely comfortable granting. Talking about it, as Ms. Jacobs and, and Ms. McIntyre was, uh, were uh, suggesting, talking about it is absolutely within your purview, and that's why you come here, get the feedback from the board, and then it's, uh, you know, re rework it or, or press the application for, for a vote and then appeal from there. That's certainly um, whatever strategy or will you have. Um, so again, my message is just to, to e echo my brothers and sisters on the board by suggesting that a thousand square foot family suite is not within the, the scale of anything that I would consider seriously approving. Um, for, if you came in at 496, we wouldn't have a variance. We would only have a special permit. We would be producing, you know, just as to the use, it would be a, a relatively easy vote. We'd give you the normal speeches and caveats about how this had better not be common, you know, income producing apartment or the second home. Uh, things like that, or somebody outside of the first order of family to come live, would give all the speeches. But at the end of the day, speaking only for myself, but tradition among the board is that we have a, a history of granting the special permit part. The variance is where we are really falling down today. Okay. Well, um, I can't change you guys' mind, so nothing I can say or do to. So one, one of their, you know, the, a couple of things that can be done. One is that we can continue the hearing certainly for another month or two or three if you're interested in reworking the plans. You can certainly withdraw the application if you're, if you're saying, you know what, I gotta have a thousand square feet, my in-laws need it, you know, no, a thousand definitely. square feet or bust. Um, uh, or pre press for a vote, which certainly doesn't feel like it would go favorably. No, I definitely would go next month and this way I can talk to them about it and see if uh, they feel like um, trying to change something up. Well, what is a reasonable number, though? Is that 500 the reasonable number? It, it, it should be within a spitting distance of the 496, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, you know, whatever 25% whatever of 1984 is, I think that's yeah. what you articulated as a square footage of the yeah. house, within spitting distance of that. Okay. Yeah, so I Would guess like I'm going to, to yeah, till next month, and this way I can just um, at least be able to talk to them about it. I make a motion to continue. Before you do that, there's people here. They wanted okay. to speak. I mean, do you, whoa, reel that back in there, buddy. <laughs> Hyper, hyperspace. <laughs> so with, with that part of the dialogue, if there is anybody in the gallery who is here to speak on the matter, you are more than welcome to come up to the podium, na name and address, and then say what you have to say. Come on up, sir. Robert Winnie, 58 Colgate Drive, two houses away from where Harold lives. So when he proposed this, I looked at the layout and based on what other houses are on the street and the variety of houses, um, I didn't see a problem with it. Um, so from my point of view, I don't have a problem with him having a, the, uh, the suite, in-law suite there. Um, if it's a violation of what you would approve for square footage, then that's a different issue. But so well, we're, just, think... we're just here to, I'm just here to, uh, say that I would not be opposed to something that would be considered 
in the future a two family or think it would be a detriment to our street. Okay, so I, I think just to just repeat so I'm, I'm clear, I think what I'm hearing you say is conceptually a family suite is is uh, it is, is fine with you. Yes. Um, it, I think I also heard just did, have you taken a look at the plans? Yes. And so generally speaking those those plans are not in any way offensive and you're supportive. No. Of, they're, they're not in any way offensive with okay. my support. Great. Thank you. Okay. Is there uh, anyone else? No. No. Any last last words, or shall we? No. Continue? Just so we'll push it on until next month and see if we can come up with something that would uh, maybe uh, meet. Oh my God. <laughs> I know you're looking at the clock and you turn it into a pumpkin in five minutes, but just like, right. if maybe if you can take the design and make it not as long and just make it a little more, you know, just around. I know you're constricted with the pool. And I also going to have to ask you about your shed. How big is that? The shed? Yeah. Uh, I think it's probably eight by 10. Okay. Or 10 by 10 or something. Eight by 10 is good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, what? Because yeah. if it was more than eight by 10, it'd be considered eight a structure. Eight. It's eight by eight. Eight by eight by eight is the threshold. Otherwise, it's considered a structure, and that would be one of your lot lines. Sixty-four okay. square feet. So, if, um, I didn't actually measure, but I will for next week. Eight meeting. by eight. Yeah, understood. Because it's on, it's on there, so that would be because that's a violation of your um, okay your lot in the back, isn't it? Is it twenty something? I don't know if it's you move to the new the room. Yeah, um, I'll just say, as the only architect on the board, um, I'll second the comment about the stretching of the building along the streetscape. And, you know, it, 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 in my eyes, it would be more favorable to go backward as much as possible. It's helpful to the street. It, it retains the character of the neighborhood as a single family residential area. And, um, I mean, from my as you as you may be looking back to reevaluate the design. Um, I mean, there's there's a kind of perplexing aspect of this bylaw to me, is that it actually encourage. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that it actually encourages you to make your house bigger, make make your single family house bigger. If you added, if you doubled the size of your um, you know, conforming to zoning, but by right you could just put a, a regular addition to your property without calling it a family suite. Uh, I understand you want it to be a family suite, you want it to have separate cooking facilities, but um, I think the, the general intent of our bylaw is even though it does encourage that in your designing, it um, it still attempts to retain the character of like a primary residence and a and a kind of appendage to that, and the kind of scale of those two is is what the bylaw is looking for, mm -hmm. and that's if, that's kind of relates to the comments that you've heard. I think so. Um, I mean, there's there's things you can do like without playing designer too much here. I'll let you I'll let everyone go, but there's things you could per perhaps do with taking existing rooms and maybe bringing that over to the existing sorry to the to the proposed in-law suite and kind of moving things around a little bit but I'll, I'll leave that to your um, to your evaluation okay I, I appreciate it thank you Go, no, now go. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion to continue uh, this matter till the next meeting. Both, both matters. The both matters. Both matters, both matters correct, matters. right. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 That is unanimous. Ellen, you're not ready. We're not done yet. Hmm? We're not done yet. Two more things on the agenda. It says the uh, town meeting warrant articles, which I don't necessarily notice. I don't so, have those. I don't have those either. So perhaps there was an intention that Alan. Nothing? Okay. 
Well, just remind everyone of town meeting is May 16th. 16th. 16. This is the voice of the town to let everyone know if you want your things heard, go to town meeting and vote, not five people. Then there is a chapel letter dated uh, March 30th, 2017, uh, with an annual update on 40P, de 40p developments, uh, particularly Meeting House Commons and Oak Ridge Village with the Maplewood Reserve. And with that, I think we are done, so there's likely a motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded. Second that's Doug. That's everybody seconded. All in favor? Aye. Adjourned. <laughs>